GPS Seattle. Premieres this Saturday, 3 p.m. East on Deep Tracks, Channel 27. And when we open that with Black Ocean, won't you come? Black Ocean, I'm Black Ocean. Um, not only the most melodic of all the Seattle scene uh, songs, but the only melodic song <laughs> in the history of Seattle. <laughs> it's the only song that you could comfortably sing along with. Uh, we would have liked to have played it, but it is not a deep enough track. Gotta deepen it up a little bit, but... That track is right on the surface. I'll, I'll tell like you this, it. even the even the uh, song we, we picked by them was a hit. We didn't pick <laughs> hits for everybody, but yeah. we picked a hit for them. Don't worry, there's a little prizes in yeah, there throughout. I got like, hey, that I'm... feeling, you gotta have some hits on deep track. You yeah. just can't you just can't deep it. At least that's according to us. Bennington, I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I am Ron Bennington. We've got a, it's just a star studded show. First of all, Gail, we are so excited to meet some people that are maybe some of our favorite performers today. Yes, I am so excited. We have John Early and Kate Berlant coming in today. They've got the funniest stuff in the world. Literally, in the world. This is the only crew that I would compare with the Christopher Guest guys, the SCTV, the SCTV guys. Yeah, like they're they're at the point now where it's like you need to get on this quick before they hit big. Like you want to be saying like, yeah, I used to watch their videos. And right. now- Do me a favor. Make sure you bring up that I'm doing the unmask with Eugene Levy. And I Catherine will. I absolutely Miller. will. Because it'll sound bad if I just jump in. No, it. no, no. I'll do it. I'll Good. say... Hey, you're doing an unmask on go, Monday. What? what unmask? What are you talking about? Oh my God, Catherine O'Hara and oh, Eugene. Catherine O'Hara, uh, uh, just a, a goddess to everybody who's in improv comedy. Yeah, I'll I'll set it up so you don't feel weird about it. Thank you. Do it early, or I'll blurt it out. Because I'll do I it. Want people, John Early. All right, I like that. <laughs> That's good improv. That's Thank the you. kind of improv yes, we need and. to be doing. Yes and. Yes and. Yeah. yeah. I do yes. a different kind of uh, improv. I do no but. No but. And, like, no but. Can so, you like, think I, of something else? <laughs> so I come in and yeah. I'm just like, hi, I'm the stewardess on this flight. Um, would you like some nuts? No, but I would like some heroin. Do you have any heroin or is it um, legal now? Is this, a world that, is this a world that uh, heroin is legal? Excuse me. I can't work with this. I just can't. Like, no. This is not- Look, when you're in that position. It's just no but. Okay, and great. And you put it back on me. Okay, so you then put I'm like. the pressure on the other performer. All right, so then uh, to pick it back up, yeah. I'll be like, um, no, I don't. No, of course not. We don't have any heroin. No, but I do have these nuts. No, but we already went through the nuts. Nobody wants the nuts. Do you have any asset? Uh, no, but I, I do have these nuts. They're so delicious. Do you understand? I just feel like. <laughs> No, you know, we're getting caught in a trap. One here. of the thing of no but is that we get away from the nuts and we go into other things. Yeah, but like, then then your control that means I'm saying yes and you're saying no but. <laughs> no, but if you do that, you could easily say no, but I have a different thing. Okay, than great. Nuts. Okay. So I'll say yeah. uh no, but I have some Molly here. No, but now I think I want those nuts. I don't know why you stopped talking oh about God. them. I can't work with you. No, but I can work with you. <laughs> See? It's See? easy. Once yeah, you get the scene. no but down, yeah. you can do a scene with anyone. Like, I could have done a scene with Frank Sinatra Jr. before he passed away. And I'm, I don't think I'm the only person who says this. Frank Sinatra Jr., way better than his dad as a singer. You think so? And actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else do we got to promote? Oh, I'm going to be at the stand tonight nice. with just a cavalcade of uh stars including uh, Artie quitter is going to be there nice very very excited always always lovely to work with Artie. uh and some other uh wonderful people uh but if you get the chance these shows at the stand have just been slaying uh ty barry one of your all-time favorites is going to be there nice who, um, and he's just great. He was just on that uh, comedy. Um, we're fighting. We're roasting each other in comedy. Why Senek is going to be there? Who, to me, looks and sounds and holds himself the way a New York uh, City comedian should. Uh, Dan Soder from the TV show 
millions and the radio show bonfire <laughs> is also going to be there <laughs> this is a hell of a show mike vecchione your Great. favorite love mike vecchione uh <laughs> ida rodriguez who as i brought her up the other night said i have that same scarf as you and then later when i went upstairs she goes like this See, here's my scarf. And my, it was like literally <laughs> the same scarf. So I, it wasn't like a similar scarf. It was literally the same exact scarf. So we, I consider us scarf buddies. But now you're best friends. Yeah, and a scarf. I mean, when it comes to scarves, we are. Just now when we were in the elevator, there was a woman who had a bag that I have. And I was like... I don't know why I want to tell her I have that bag. And I was like, there's no reason to tell her. Like, I just like, but like, I was like a little kid. I just was like, I have that bag. Like, that's it. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just ride in peace. You know what I mean? No, but you should have said something to her. I'm going to stay with that. No, but now also in the program later uh, in this show, uh, Chris Stanley has booked 45 comedians. I'm not making that up. (laughs) 45 comedians who will give their. Super Bowl uh, picks. That's the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. That's at 2 p.m. today. You won't be able to keep up with it as a matter of fact. I mean, you'll listen to it and you'll laugh and you'll know who picked what. So the iBang is putting up all the names and, and what they did, as well as some fun facts. Nice. Where they all, what they all picked or how many people picked for this reason. So that's at around two o'clock today? Yeah, around two o'clock, yes. So we got, I mean, this is super, st- give us just some of the names. Give me four of the names. Just four. Roy Wood Jr. Love Roy Wood Jr. Nick DiPaolo. Love Nick DiPaolo. By the way, I want to do an unmask with him. Let's start and talk about it. We should do it <laughs> oh. Tuesday night at the stand. <laughs> I'll make the phone call right now to them. Jim Norton. Love Jim Norton from his morning show with Sam and then also his specials, his television specials. Robert Kelly. Love Bobby Kelly. Bobby. But we know who Bobby Kelly is going to pick. Yeah, that's not, (laughs) we don't even have to guess. I call him Bobby Boston (laughs) Kelly. For a while, I was calling him Bobby Boston Bomber Kelly, and uh, he didn't like it for two reasons. (laughs) What were they? Uh, one, not doing good on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to call somebody the bomber when he's a professional comedian. And then I can't remember the second. Something. <laughs> something. I can't remember it exactly. <laughs> Is it Wednesday night or Tuesday night for the unmasked? People are now panicking. I might have met Wednesday. That is Wednesday, February 8th. Why are you afraid to correct me, Chris? I forgot what day. What the makes was. you so goddamn scared of me? It's pure fear. Producer doesn't is it? It is. That's good. <laughs> pure fear. You know how they say, is it better to be loved or feared? Yeah. Feared. It's that simple. It's yeah. better to be feared. I can't even tell the difference. That's great. <laughs> That's true. There is no difference because love is just fear of losing something. Right. Right. And fear is loving that you fear of fear. <laughs> See? See what I did there? <laughs> it's kind of like pig Latin. Yeah. Mm. By the way, I'm starting to call all Latins pig Latins. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this is, the, you know, hard times. There's like wedges between well, us. I'm in the alt-right now. Yeah. Um, or alt-white, as I, used to, <laughs> as I like to say it. Uh, our buddy Gavin McGinnis was, I think, pepper sprayed or just That's what I heard, yeah. Something. Uh, when he went to speak at NYU, which I don't know why you would book him on NYU. You could just go over and see him on the compound <laughs> meeting. Like he's always, I'm like, why are they protesting he's there? He's always around here. <laughs> right. you know what I mean, what, what is tonight's protest all about? <laughs> I'll tell you what it's about. All right. And I have been thinking the white European male has come up with every good thing in history. So let us keep doing all the good things in the future. What about hidden figures or hidden fences, as I call it? I didn't see it. I only see big comic book films. <laughs> okay. That's the movies I like. Well, it turns out you weren't alone. Actually, you weren't there, but <laughs> you, your people. Yeah, I didn't say that we didn't have people do math for us. <laughs> I'm saying, 
you know, a lot of times you're running things. You're saying it only counts like who is floating in the tin can. Well, uh, that, but like if I look at the Los Angeles Lakers mm-hmm. and their little dynasty they had, I give all the credit to Phil Jackson. <laughs> if I look at Michael Jordan and his Bulls, I give all the credit to Phil Jackson. You know? Mm-hmm. White guy. They they have it together. Thank you. You're welcome. Planet Earth, you're welcome for everything that we've done for you. And now we're attacking, I think, Iran and Mexico. Once we beat Iran and Mexico, everything is going to be great here. We're going to make America great again. <laughs> we're going to bring our jobs back. And you're going to beat the Antifa. I don't know no. what that means. That's a, the new term that I keep hearing is like... The alt-right folks refer to the opposition as the Antifa. And I was like, what is that? And it's anti-fascist? And I was like, I don't think that that's going to hurt their feelings. They're a bunch of fucking anti-fas. <laughs> like, all of them. Shouldn't we all and be there, anti-fas? <laughs> there's snowflakes that start fires and spray people. Really? That's weird. How can they be both? Are they sensitive and they're timid? Or are they crazy and violent? Um, Gail, maybe you've ever heard of a blizzard. Okay. When enough snowflakes get together, they wreak havoc. So okay. sometimes they go immediately from being super sensitive to being crazy dangerous. Like snow. Like right. snowflakes themselves. Like, oh, look, it's pretty. Snow flurries. Uh-oh. We can't get out of the driveway. You know? <laughs> we haven't had enough milk. Now the power's out. People are dying. All right? People are fucking dying, folks. And that's why on my alt-right show... I just want you to know that I'm here to guide you to, I guess, white success. What was the name of that show? Alt Righty then? Is that what it is? All (laughs) right now. Baby, the alt right (laughs) now. Not that I don't like the (laughs) anti-files. I do. Okay? Not as much as I like the files, though. I hear now they're saying that the anti-fuzz are the fuzz. Like, that's what they're saying. Turns out that the anti-fascists are fascists, which I don't really think that isn't like like fascism is specifically like right wing and in power. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what all the labels mean. (laughs) I've used them. There's so (laughs) many. Every label. Like, I will call a cop a fascist. Right. I don't know why, though. Now, can we all use cuck? Is that what we've decided? Everyone can. Everybody can be a cuck. A cuck can be a good or a bad thing. What is it, Chris? Chris, are you okay? Yeah, software. Oh, my God. Mm. The phone software. Gail, the phone software is happening. Oh, my trouble. God. What's happening? Oh, we're okay now. Thanks. <sighs> Thanks, Chris. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Vice is going around telling everybody that Gavin is not in place and he's been gone a long time. So. They just want to clear that up. Yeah, they're trying to get the word out there. Hey, don't say that Gavin's <laughs> with Vice anymore. Okay? He's like our Pete Best. Uh, Chris in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, hey, Ronnie, you want to see, was Gavin McGinnis pepper sprayed by uh, Pepper Hicks brand pepper spray? There is. We tried to put out a Pepper Hicks brand pepper spray, but you've completely dropped the name Pepper Hicks, right? It's, I mean, people, people still call me Pepper Hicks, yeah. but yeah, I don't refer to myself as Pepper Hicks, just Chris Stanley. <laughs> Why don't you go uh, by Christopher the Don King? <laughs> the Don, I like that. Uh, can, uh, can Jen come in here for a second? Jen had to uh, run out for a moment. She'll be. Where'd she right go? Back. She had to run. Uh, she had to run to the office for a, for a moment. Why? Why is he being so fake with me? I don't know. There's a secret. It's me and you, buddy. You know <laughs> what I mean? You yeah. don't, you just uh, treated me like you were my dentist's receptionist. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the doctor's not in today. He was called away on an emergency. It's a family emergency, <laughs> and it's none of your beeswax. Are you sending her out to get her own birthday surprise party stuff? Oh, my God. Is that what you're doing? That's really effed up. That's not how a birthday works. <laughs> Look, Jenny, you have to do me this favor. Banzai. Banzai. Uh, you can win uh, our big Super Bowl contest. When the first interception happens during the Super Bowl, tweet 
hashtag bonsai, B-A-N-Z-A-I, to at Bennington Show. First one received by the Bennington Twitter feed uh, wins the signed football. And Chris, I don't have to read all this, do I? Uh, the no. Rules? No, you don't have to read the rules. Well, that should be something we're posting them on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. maybe you can. And then, Chris, you got to be able to read the rules like really fast. Like it's the end of one of those drug commercials. Yeah. Gotcha. Would it, you be able to do that? I can do that. Pull that off. Uh, I want you to be able to read all the rules within 11 seconds. All right. Someone time him. Veto, right Veto, time him. 11 seconds. Start the clock. Give me a start time. Just tell me when to start, Veto. Oh. If you, if, if you tweet hashtag Bonsai for the first inception of your squad from the game, if you use the hashtag hashtag Bonsai, spelled exactly like that, you have to tweet at Bain, all judges decide to final, and where's the first person to show up in the at Bain, show feed from them as they see it. If your feed shows something different, that doesn't make you right. I don't even know what you just said there. It was like 11 and a half. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. I killed. I was way less than 11 seconds. It was one long slur. As a matter of fact, if I was going to say anything to yeah. you, I'm going to go, I'm going to need to cut you off. <laughs> you can't drink anymore. So, uh, Chris, you got another nip slip of the day that you put up in the eye bank? <laughs> yeah, it's a new nip slip. God, you really love those. God, I can't get enough of them. Nip or lip slips. This is from Jesus Instagram Christ, model. Dude. He loves to say lip slip. Why would you sell something that you, you're delivering less still, right? Yeah, go right. Good point. Go right, he says to me. Go right. That's not a fucking phrase. Come Do on, you know Chris. how many nipples you can view that want to be viewed on the internet? But there's something about the nip slip that makes it so much better. So this is Instagram model Sarah Underwood. I don't know her. She's very popular on Instagram. Okay. So here she is on the beach just, you know, and then there's the press just popping out. It's <laughs> video. Right. Can I tell you, a nip slip has to happen live. She just dropped her tit out. <laughs> it's an Instagram. She had to upload it. Yeah, she, That's it, not did a she upload slip, this? Dude. I don't know who uploaded because it's not on her Instagram. It was, this video was just uploaded. But it would have to be her or the photographer. But that is not a slip. <laughs> a slip happens on the red carpet or hopefully in some kind of water park. <laughs> But someone that happening on the beach and then uploading it is we've released the tit video. This is technically a nip slip. It is. You were. I just gave you what a nip slip has to be. But she's wearing clothes and the clothes slip down. Releasing the on the purpose nip. is not fucking a nip slip. Yeah. And even if she's trying to make it look like it, it looks like she pulled her shirt down for a second and then like quickly covered up coyly. That's thus a releasing the nip. That's planned. You're like falling for this hook, line, and sinker. Jen, I just wanted to say this to you. Happy birthday today. Happy birthday, Jen. Thanks Happy so birthday, much. dear Jen. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Jen. Thank Happy you. birthday, Jen. Thank you. Uh, Chris, we've already done it. Yeah, oh, and also we were all singing in and like, people nice are asking, cute ways. Where do you find this? You're slurring. They couldn't find out what it was called. Instagram model Sarah Underwood has nip slip. <laughs> No time for the. Uh, it makes everything slip. sounds gross. Has nip slip. Has <laughs> nip slip. Why is that gross? It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Has nip slip. <laughs> like, come on. Like, what is this? A telegram? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Bang by the word. This is Jen's time today, Chris. Right, I want you to shut, <laughs> shut your goddamn nip hole. Jen, this is you, you're celebrating a birthday weekend, right? Yes. So we wanted to throw a theme party for you. Mm-hmm. So okay. our theme was work. <laughs> <laughs> work, 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 work. We're, We're just all playing be that work. on a loop. <laughs> yeah. Are you a big drinker? Maybe we can get you real drunk today. You I take am. pills? I'm a little... No, I don't Why eat... eat a fistful of pills? <laughs> we'll see what happens to you on the air. <laughs> we got Percocets and booze back there. All right. Tony wants to uh, go up against Christopher... The Don King. Uh, Tony, what do you got? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's how peppy Hamburglar that Sarah Underwood's in Playboy. Oh, so oh come nip. on. She's a Chrissy. professional tit model. No, she's now a professional Instagram model. But she was a playmate first, right? That, that nip is her playmate. bread and butter, Chris. Yes. So, it's like, oh, by the way, uh, I went to... Uh, I went to a, a, a restaurant, and I ended up seeing a roll there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's nothing. There will be rolls, Chris. You always want to see updated nips. And so if you haven't All seen... Right, Cajun Jack said this. <laughs> Yawn, she's always naked. 
please. Uh, Chris Gallagher <laughs> says, Hicks is an idiot. Moron. <laughs> jerk <laughs> off. That's a nip flip, dude. Not a nip slip. <laughs> What the fuck is In which flip? someone she flips just... out the nip. <laughs> Duh. All right, this is the other thing that the internet is blowing up for, saying that Steve Bannon looks exactly <laughs> like uh, James Murphy, the rock and roll star. From LCD Sound System. Does he? There's a lot of memes it's going on. It's just around. LC Sound System? LCD <laughs> Sound System. <laughs> just like you to hide the D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take a look at this. Yeah, I want to see uh, you know what? compare the way, and contrast. It's like when people say, oh, look, I spotted Fez somewhere. It's just a guy with a gray beard. <laughs> yes, if they have a gray beard, they think they look alike. <laughs> I, or like me, anytime someone has bangs, like, oh, my God, you right. guys look so much alike. No. Or I compared to every white person there is. <laughs> Like everyone's saying, oh, look, it's Ron, and it's Tim Conway. <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? You're taking forever to do this? That's not even a good comparison. One doesn't even have the beard. Give, give us They're the two middle-aged deal. white guys. They look exactly alike. <laughs> I don't know about <sighs> that. Again, it's, it's like what? It's like gray stubble is the issue here. The gray stubble, and they have the same length hair. They look like the same dude. You think they do? Yeah, I think they look alike. Well, you also thought they were called LC Sound <laughs> System. Uh, 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 Sarah, Sarah Silverman taking a lot of heat today because they said she called for a military coup <laughs> on Twitter. Now, the reason that this doesn't scare me is that she's no general general of a revolutionary army. All right. <laughs> that would have been a little more scarier. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just i not sure she's going to get the troops together. It's I mean, got all the be... little snowflakes out there upset, though. They're so dangerous or sensitive. All right. Uh, HBO next. After all these years, finally told the girls. And what's the girl's uh, star's name? Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham. They couldn't do a shot. She wanted to have the money shot. Just an uh, arc of exploding cum. <laughs> And HBO said, nah, nah, not gonna. <laughs> not gonna. That was their official quote. Well, George uh, H.W. Bush is working there now. <laughs> There's our buddies. Just, um, um, yeah, but I like that. I didn't know. It's good to know where the HBO line is because yeah. I know I've been watching shows on HBO where I'm just like I am watching Look, the some Fonzie. light pornography right now. I am the Fonzie. There he is. That was from an Andy Kaufman TV special. And when no one knew who Andy Kaufman <laughs> was, and they, and they said it was a Fonzie lookalike contest. <laughs> there was all these guys as Fonzie. And the Andy Kaufman's just standing there with this like nerdy smile. And they would say, okay, do your impression. He was like, hey, I am the Fonzie. <laughs> and the Fonzie is cool. <laughs> and it was the funniest shit. This one was with like the Fonz was at his peak. <laughs> oh, there's a show on tonight called Bannon and Murphy, mm-hmm. and it's um, it's wait. kind of a fun thing. <laughs> it's alt right and alt rock at the same oh, time. Oh, perfect. Okay, now I get the connection. I mean, they look very much alike. They look like middle aged guys with a gray beard. It's just the gray beard. That's really what we're we're talking about. A very short, kind of stubbly gray There's beard. no way if uh, James Murphy walked in here, you'd be like, oh my God, Steve Bannon just came <laughs> into our studio. I'm sorry, Steve, but we're waiting for the singer from LCD Sound System. <laughs> Should you be a DC? <laughs> All right, I love you, but don't bring me down. <laughs> I want to read this book that uh, (laughs) supposedly Steve Bannon has uh, based his life on. I think it's called like the fourth, I don't like wave or something like this, but supposedly there's something in America that happens like every 80 years, right? Mm -hmm. That changes everything falls that was big before it and a new system is built. So he had it as the revolutionary war then the civil war 
and then World War II. So anything that happened between any of those places, whoever had power, yeah. that power was gone and there was a new establishment. And he believes, and this is even before he used Donald Trump, and this is based on a book that he had read and he had done a documentary about it. Are we looking it up? The Fourth Turning. The Fourth Turning. Okay, thank you. Um, and this is what's coming, and it's why he got involved in politics and, you know, supposedly why all these things that they're trying to do are being done real fast. People are believing that this is Bannon's thing of shake everybody up. Right. You know, just one after another you bring up. And this is like the dawn of the new big change. The, the new dawning f- of the age of Aquarius. It is. The age so of Aquarius. Aquarius. Harmony and understanding. <laughs> no, but I think you're wrong. <laughs> That's just improv I was doing. That's so good. So anyway, um, call Audible. Maybe I can get the book on tape with Steve Bannon reading it. You just wrote that down. Audible. Why does he write really strange things Bannon. down? Circled. Yeah. In the meantime, he forgot to plug GPS. <laughs> That's happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. East on Deep Tracks Challenge 27. That's GPS Seattle. And he forgot to promote our other show that's going to run all weekend. Funniest Comedians. That's the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year, which premieres today at 2 p.m., re-airs tomorrow at noon, and Sunday at 2 p.m. all on Raw Dog. Oh, and you might be saying, why do we make all these kind of programming for you? Love. Love, Kelly. Love. Um, Mass listener said uh, the real comparison is Bannon, um, Tim Dillon, and Tim Dillon has put his, uh, himself up with that as well. You click on the link, Chris. Getting it. Have Chris do it. Chris, can you get on that, please? Yes. Uh, and then I'm going to be out tonight. I'm hosting two shows at the stand. In New York City. Do you come out to stand by R.E.M. every time? I come out to stand by me and I just point at myself. <laughs> and during, that's the whole first time. You can stand and I point at the right. sign. Right. <laughs> by, by me. me. Gotcha. Well, cons- is, consider now, the R.E.M. one because I think it could be. Well, I nothing ever works in that <laughs> thing. <laughs> and also on those shows, Dan Soder, Wyatt Cenac. Aida Rodriguez, Todd Barry, Mike Vecchione, and Ron Bennington. That's at the 8 p.m. show, the 10 p.m. show, Artie Lang, Dan Soder, Wyatt Senek, Mike Vecchione, Ron Bennington. Artie Quitter making the scene. Yeah. We're doing, I guess we're not announcing that town hall? Not yet. Okay. So later I'm going to make an announcement. Like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Shit>. Monday. <laughs> want to announce it yes, on Monday? Yes, Monday, 100%. Monday, Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm looking at the Tim Dillon, Steve Bannon thing, and it is closer than I thought it was going to be. It's closer than I thought it was going to be. Really? I'm stunned by it. <laughs> right now, I'm absolutely stunned. Wow. Incredible. Here's what I feel bad Close about. James Murphy. <laughs> Tim Dillon is 30 years younger than him <laughs> and looks just as bad. <laughs> It's more like son of Bannon. He also wrote, I'm not thrilled about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a prediction on Tim Dillon. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna get a sitcom very soon. You think? I watch him on stage and he has that <laughs> King of Queens, you know, Ray Romano. I forget what I think the other show was called Ray Romano of Queens. Mm-hmm. Why did they call it that, though? Ray Romano of Queens. <laughs> that was Everyone Loves Queens. Oh, look. Oh. Hey, you got your big date tonight? Pull that. No, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's my big date. And you going for the sex? Oh, yeah. I'm... <laughs> Do me a favor. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Do me a favor. Happen, but... Get some sex pictures of yourself with your lovers. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tell her. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, try to don't. slip her nip for yeah. us. Or, you know what you could do? Put all of us in the closet just watching. Yeah. Guys. That's sh- legal, right? <laughs> Here they come. Here they come. I was like, like all of us, like, 
The two of us of Jen and Pino were just like, just looking through the slats. It's going great, guys. You can't talk. You're, you're doing gonna... it, Chris. <laughs> Thanks. Chris, try not to go so slow. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe he was doing it, but he's doing it. <laughs> it looks weirder than I thought. <laughs> Don't mind the snickering and talking coming from that. If closet. he just, while well, you guys are doing it, he just heard that. Thinking that he's working up an appetite, gonna dine a little afternoon delight, and then he starts to fuck to just go, go, go to the beat. Yeah, skyrocketing flight, afternoon delight. Great song. I just gotta tell an afternoon delight uh, joke because uh, we're doing that. Are we doing it? Is it a town hall or an unmask on Monday? On Monday is an unmasked. All right, with Eugene Levy. Mm-hmm. Maybe his son, Dan Levy, we don't know. Possibly. And Catherine O'Hara, who we all love. And remember to bring that up. Definitely. Uh, with John Early and Kate. Berlant, yeah. I must call her um, Blanchette. And I was like, is that right? <laughs> um, but anyway, so... Uh, Eugene Levy is the dad and he walks in and his son had just had some gay sex with another young man and that guy was in a towel and uh, Eugene was like oh excuse me sorry hope I didn't work uh, walk in on a little um, afternoon delight if they're still calling it that and they're like no no one's saying that and I was laughing so hard because you brought up a 40 year old song right? that no one by the way Ever said afternoon delight. <laughs> like, back in the- that that not song was phrase. just fucking made up for the song. It wasn't a phrase of like, hey, we can make this into a song. And then after the song, no one started to even say, yeah, I got a little afternoon delight today. <laughs> you said the word delight. Like, why of all the, why of all the things to choose? Afternoon. I don't want to just come out and say no, sex. No. It's going to be classy about this. <laughs> See how the city's Romo uh, put together a wish list? Uh, no, I didn't see his wish list. Houston, Denver, both on it. Denver makes sense. Houston would make sense, too. Actually, yeah. It was a decent team there if they could fucking work out the QB thing, which we've said about that team ever since they got together. <laughs> like 10 years? Yeah. <laughs> Even if they had a quarterback and some receivers and some decent linemen, they could really go places, you know, if they get the kicking game straightened out. <laughs> Do you see that punter for uh, Indianapolis has quit so he can pursue his first love, comedy, and he's going to write for Bleacher Report and do some stand-up comedy, but he has to give them back like $5 million. Really? Yeah, because he gets like $2.5 million a year to punt. Yeah. To punt. And Pat McAfee. He's fucking insane. Yeah, and it's $5 million. That's crazy. How no much- one ever... I don't give a shit what you're doing. Don't walk away from a $2 million a year job. Like you're saying, like, man, I got a $2 million a year job. I, I'm going to quit and do something else. Don't. Get a ho- Like, can you have a hobby? Like, can you? First of all, punting is a hobby. You know what I mean? You don't have to do it that much. <laughs> How many years does, does he have to stay? With two more fucking years? What are you going to do? Punt five times a game? <laughs> yeah, it also seems like you don't want to over punt. You know what I mean? Save, no, save that no. knee. Um, last thing you want to do is punt three and out. Fuck that. Right. So I don't know. I guess he just hates punting. <laughs> he just fucking hates it. I don't see how he wants to do. write for Bleach Report and do stand up. It's just this will be it. You ever notice when you're going for the coffin corner and it just <laughs> goes into the end zone? <laughs> That's one fucked up day. Is my right, folks? I can't relate to this website <laughs> or this writer. <laughs> Did you? Did you ever do this? You go to punt, you just <laughs> look up at the balls over your head, and then you, you have that embarrassing thing, like chasing after it, and then you pick it up, and like, what am I doing with the ball? They want to tackle the guy with the ball, you know? <laughs> so then you try to pass it, to intercept it, goes back for six, then you come back to the fucking, you know, what's his name again? Pat McAfee. Uh, then you come back to the bench, and I'm like, great job, Pat. <laughs> Sarcasm. The other thing I was thinking about, um, <laughs> why don't punters get teased? You know what I mean? <laughs> kick. 
Kickers get teas. What are punters supposed to get? Coffee? You know? I mean, they get tea. That's good. We That's, get coffee. He's good. I've had that thought too. Shit. <laughs> One of the worst things I hate about punting is looking at everybody's ass <laughs> while I'm, you know, doing my job. <laughs> joking before but this material's great it's fucking great i mean i think this kid's gonna have real success yeah <clears throat> well that went over like a blocked pun am i right folks <laughs> he <never stopped. laughs> fuck punt i thought you said cunt i picked the wrong thing <laughs> good night everybody oh yeah definitely always yeah. close on that <laughs> Anyway, who walks away from money? I don't know. And even if he gets tackled, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's rough in the fucking punter. Like, it's a, it's a good thing if he gets hurt. What you're saying has nothing to do with anything else. You're right. Even if he correct. gets tackled, it's a good thing, he yells. <laughs> I'm just saying, being a punter outside just of like stop a... stop it. Chris, I just want to understand... You're not the guy who makes sense. Here's the thing. I want to understand what he was saying. Because, you know, I you guys teach me about football. I don't know about football. What does that mean exactly? I always thought it was a bad thing. Why would it? Is it good for a punter? Are you wearing that uh, too tight shirt to your date? Uh, no, I'm gonna have a different shirt. Looser. Are you uh, when you make sweet love to your Tinder dates, right? Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet love. Do you leave the shirt on? Uh, I leave the undershirt on sometimes. Sometimes it comes off. Oh my god! We just want a shirt. Sometimes, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it's on. (laughs) Sometimes it's off. Front depends on the, the, you know. Lustiness of okay. it. Okay. We just wanted to know ahead of time since we will be watching through the slats. <laughs> oh, shit. That'll be fun, though. Jen, move over. I can't see. There he goes. <laughs> Why is he doing that? How much? How long does the sash last for you? It depends. Like, drunkenly, it lasts, uh, it could last up to like 20 minutes. Oh, my God. I can't imagine. <laughs> You're drunk and sex. Slobber. <laughs> <laughs> you like keep trying to get them to do shots. I mean, I, I know we're going to hear one of these was a rape. I'm not <laughs> raping anyone. It. And it yes, really I encourage, I encourage everyone to have some more shots of straight liquor. Mm, Did, it's like you weird. never took that eleven months off of <laughs> non-drinking. Yeah, it's it went straight back to <laughs> fucking square one. You're staying with uh, you're staying with the pets. Right? Hey, I called it months ago. I have to stick with it, pets, and they'll cover my three. And where are you going to go? Falcons? I'm going Falcons. Do you want to score? Yeah. I'm going to go Falcons 34-31. Wow. Tight one. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking Pats all the time, but there's been a little shift in the kind of in the universe that I'm feeling. I'm thinking more Falcons now. Really? Well, I've been playing back and forth. I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. I will not be overjoyed or destroyed no matter who wins. Oh, you know? yeah. I'll be very yeah. level about it and just enjoy the game. As long as it's a good game, that's all you want. Mm-hmm. Good game. Oh, you got the Super Bowl uh, food picked out, too. Nice. Do you want to know or be surprised? Um, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I'd like to know. Beets. Just the big no, bowl of beets. No, that's, that's like it? the one thing. It's good for your eyesight. I hate beets. A beet to me tastes like, as you know, Poop, rolled in dirt, and then dusted with sugar. No, you're making me starve. Mm. Poop. <laughs> it's like that, I guess. Jen, we're getting some nice food for a celebration for you today. Thank you. Thanks. Are so we much. getting her a cake? Just a giant cake with candles? Uh, no giant cake. I don't want to give it away. I don't want her to. What? Is it a pie? Cupcakes. It's cupcakes. Well, you so just you gave just it gave away. it away. Why would you do it? I wanted to get her birthday cotton candy. <sighs> I love cotton candy so much more than beets. I'm going to text uh, Greg. You want beet flavor cotton candy? <laughs> no, that will ruin it. What beet flavored things do you have today? Please say none. Borscht is beet flavored. I you love borscht. I hate borscht. I love borscht. Oh my borscht god, it's so vile to me. I like it hot. Hot borscht. <laughs> oh god, I'm... steep boiling. <laughs> I thought we were going to do ice like cream sundays. Cold sweats. Didn't know where to get an ice cream sundae. That, and get here in time you so it wouldn't melt. It. I, this is how you get it. I thought it was it was safer to just get the cupcakes. You can make Yeah, I thought cold. you were going to make a whole sundae bar. <laughs> I didn't think to make them. 
He, another word for Sunday bar for him is just a bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah. That's very, very exciting. Vegetarian friendly, too. Yes, it is. Now, what's the story, uh, Gail? You were saying that Vito is dating a, f- a no. porn actress? No, Vito's friend yeah. is now dating a porn actress that Vito is very familiar with. And so he was he was confiding in me yesterday. So I thought, hey, why not bring this on the air? Smart. Someone has a private <laughs> thought. And he wanted to share it with me off air. I say, no, sir. This goes on air. Yeah, this kid I'm dating, this kid I'm friends with. This kid I'm friends with, I went to high school with, is dating a very popular porn star. She's like, she's out of the game now. But she was like one of the top porn stars for like three years. Yeah, they don't have a long uh, thing there, right? I don't know. And she's like a young one. Like she's send Jen in uh, to sit with us. I want to be about her birthday today. Come on in here. Come Jen. in. Come in, Jen. Come on, Jen. Come in. <laughs> Go to run. Run, Jen. Get past that chair, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> she struggled with a chair. <laughs> yeah. So, who is the the porn actress? Her name is. Uh... Mia Khalifa. Oh. So you're, you're familiar with her as well? Yes. I, I wouldn't say she was for three years. I'd say maybe a year max, but she was incredibly popular for that year, like number one overall. Let me say, I don't recognize her at all. Well, what was her uh, thing? She wore a hijab in porn, and like her home country flipped the fuck out, and she blew What's up from that. her home country? She's Lebanese. I love their um, song, like their national anthem. Really? Yeah. We are Lebanese, <laughs> if you please. We are Lebanese, if you don't please. If Where did you he looking baby buggy? <laughs> That's good. Where did he meet her at, Vito? So I read an interview with her, uh, like from five days ago. Apparently, he's just like messaged her online. Wow. What? Yeah, he's the only guy that messaged her online and got through. She's been like, she's denied rappers. Like, she put Drake on blast for DMing her. And you know, I didn't think I of this before. I, I should ask you what he looks like. like is he a good looking dude? Yeah, he's a good looking dude. Is he Lebanese still? No, he's a white dude from Queens. Whoa. All right. <laughs> he's your people. But his his concern was that he feels uncomfortable because he has now jerked to his friends. Girlfriend, stop it! You're gonna do that anyway, come on, bro. No matter who she's, <laughs> I I brought this up to him. I said, "Come on, this, I'm sure this has come up before," and he says, "No, I don't jerk to real people." And I found this insane. I was like, "You have never had just like a thought and a fantasy about someone you know, like your friend's girlfriend." And he said, "No." Yeah, I've, I'm, I've only jerked off to porn. Maybe the closest to porn that's not porn is like a WWE diva or like a nude scene in a movie. Oh but I've never jerked off to like some chick. I... By diva, do you mean tag team? <laughs> 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 but I've never jerked off to somebody I knew because one, I went to an all boys school. So there weren't girls in my school. Yeah, but like, you know, women now that you're not g- well, jerk off to you or Jen. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? What about me, Vito? I'm sure he has. <laughs> I know that's just maybe that's why he said it. Yeah, I don't jerk off to real people. Right. So he wants everybody to feel Jen, safe. Jen, you're safe because that's his most important thing for people to feel safe. First of all, who cares what you jerk off to or who you jerk off to? But he that's ruined your own personal. Time. This dude ruined this porn star for me. Like the other night, I was trying to find something to watch. She popped up, and I didn't even want to jerk off anymore. What were you on? I usually scrub, browse around Pornhub or look at my personal collection. <laughs> Personal, personal collection. Is yeah, that I, like, ripped, a bunch, I, no, I like, ripped yeah. a bunch of websites. So, like, I got my own collection in case I ever want to see one of the classics. Do you mean video or? No, no, no. Like in my computer. Like I have like a porn hard drive. Like a hard drive just for porn. Man, you can't have that. But is it? I know. It seems like trouble, right? I got rid of that years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but streaming. all of, but all of yours was like illegal. No, and, no like, nothing illegal. And... Nothing. Everything's illegal. All of it's streaming. That was on my computer. What was the thing that she wears? What's that called? The job. The job. Is that why they were mad at her? Yeah, yeah, they were pissed because she was wearing it. Like the whole porn, she was wearing it. Like sucking dick and... 
Come on. <laughs> Sorry. You need to be that blunt. The, oh, during all acts. <laughs> Thank you. See how nice that is for us? It is, you know. Yeah, I could picture it. Out. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Did, by the way, that's an HR violation, oh, my gee, friend. Oh, God. And I'm not even making that up. Uh, we could easily, easily have you thrown out of here. Oh, I don't want to get Jen, thrown out. Jen, whenever you do, I support you if you want to talk Jen, to Jen, I back you up uh, 100%. Okay. Jen, Thank please you. don't get me fired. So, <laughs> now, she lives in New York? No, she lives in, like, Washington or something. She was just... When my when like DC I, or state DC, so he goes back and forth to date her. I don't know if he goes back and forth, but she was with him at the Islanders game a few nights ago. Why didn't you bring them in here? Because uh, I'm not the one who like ran into them. Okay, but this story sounded more and more no, like bullshit. I my friend sent Guess me what a, guys we got vetoed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, God, my, the, the, my the friend, newest MTV show. You got vetoed. The only thing I'm going to take from this conversation is when you said you were dating some kid. <laughs> A child. He said, this, I'm dating this kid. <laughs> this kid I'm dating? Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Stupid. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. Do you know uh, February 2nd was the anniversary of his death? I know. I just yeah. I just found that out. I, uh, that was what, last night? Yeah. And I spent all night just sitting around in the dark smoking cigarettes. Thinking about him. Yeah. What's your favorite movie by him? That's really difficult. I might say, I might say his performance in Boogie Nights is still kind of like my That's favorite. still number one for you. Um, but like my favorite performance of all time was getting to see him in True West. You know, yes. like like not a film, but that was that was like one of my favorite things I've ever witnessed in my life. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Looks like somebody had a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what you're trying to say is you have a really good. I dad. guess that's what I was saying. I thought I was just answering a question about his performance. What about you? F- favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman? Well, yeah. uh, mine's like a weird one. It's personal. So I used to I used to coach his kid at Chelsea, and he used to come in every day and play basketball. So I used to just always think about Along Came Polly because I'd watch him shoot baskets for like an hour every Saturday. Was he raining it? Like he yelled in Polly? I, 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 all of us wanted to yell under our breaths. Like, make it rain every time he took a shot. He would yell, make it rain, and just throw this fucking brick. I mean, it's a really dumb Ben Stiller movie, and he played a two-dimensional character and killed it. Fucking killed it. But if you think about just, like, like what he does is just, like, a little role like in magnolia and it's like nothing like that's just a tiny yeah. little role and he's going like this yeah you do have that and you got milk yeah okay but what about uh camelites and um how's the peep and tommy has a peep and tommy how's the peep and what's the name of that movie uh he's t- barely in it talented mr ripley talented mr ripley yeah. and here's the thing about him he's like really pulley fat in that movie right mm-hmm. but he plays a coxman. He plays a guy yeah. with confidence that gets a lot of women. And you fu- like he didn't lose weight for this. He didn't. Ch- you know what I mean? He just put on nicer clothes, and you fucking believe it a million percent. Yeah, You're like that fucking dude, bro, is really. On my nose. <laughs> All right, Chris Stanley. I hate to say yo. Before the devil knows you're dead. Wow, that's a good fucking movie. That man. is a love fucking that movie. Fantastic movie, and he's amazing in it. Playing a drug addict. Yeah. He's good in everything, man. I'm always going to miss him. What about him as Lester Banks? Love uh, that, man. Yeah. The Lester Banks role. God, he was fucking great. Remember the day he died when you called me? Mm-hmm. And you weren't saying anything? You were just there on the phone? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't saying anything. I was just there on the phone. We didn't even say hello to each other. Nope. I just answered the phone, just silence. <laughs> just silently. We we're like, we both know. Like, I just read this online. I'm so depressed. And the phone rings, and I pick it up, and it's gone. She doesn't say anything. We just sat in silence on the phone. So sad. We man. loved him. He's the best. I texted I you. Burp? No, I think I just I snorted. <laughs> we were all that. having this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
it's a really touching moment, but. <laughs> it's like a fucking hairball, dude. <laughs> You, <laughs> he'd be a great person to bring to a funeral. By the way, you, you know remember what I mean? what you texted me when he died? Because I always remember it. So it was the word fuck in it. You wrote, we just got fucked in the dick. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman is dead. <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and I just delete. <laughs> delete. <laughs> Not the text, your, your number. <laughs> When he texts me, it just shows up as a random phone number. I don't have his name in it. Fuck, man. By the way, the amount of times I have to be in an elevator and Chris is saying we got fucked in the dick hole. And just like some random chick from NBC is just trying to like look forward. Just feel like I didn't. We hear have to that. listen to their <laughs> shitty conversations about fucking pizza or whatever office so, politic <laughs> bullshit. Me, all, me one and, pizza. That was it. <laughs> one day. Me and Jen, I wish I could remember what they're even saying, but me and Jen were in the elevator, and I was like, "These are the three corniest dudes that have ever <laughs> yeah. existed together, best friends." <laughs> and we just got stuck on an elevator with them. Patrick just gave me my update that I'm. Um, Hosting the 8 and 10 at the stand tonight. Nice. It's going to be great shows. Yeah. That's a great, great lineup. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing fun. lineup, right? Mm-hmm. That lineup could be an HBO special. I'm going to I'm gonna actually film it as an HBO special. You should. And we'll just call it Bennington um, Presents the Greatest Comics <laughs> at the Stand. Guess what? I'm not going to HBO with this. I'm probably going to go to Netflix oh. or Vimeo. That wow. seems to be the new hot hand. Yeah. Vimeo. That's what 555 is on. Yeah. Vimeo. Love 555. Did you watch it, Chris? I watched the first episode. Why just one? I'm going to I'm gonna have a nice I weekend. They're so short. I, like, I couldn't stop. They're going to be here soon, though, and you don't know anything uh, about it. Oh, God. And we are going to talk about it, and you're going to go like this. <laughs> <laughs> what the f- I'm sorry, my cat has a fur ball stuck in its dick hole. Meow. Why did he meow? <laughs> you don't meow when you have a fur ball. <laughs> Just creepy, like meow in the corner. Meow, creepy. meow, Chris Stanley, meow, meow. GPS uh will be saturday mm-hmm. saturday three o'clock gps seattle seattle this is seattle that is on deep tracks channel 27 3 p.m east tune mm. in maybe because it's seattle everyone can do heroin together while they listen that'd be great that would be great yeah in our flannels okay. uh let's see should we do a bonsai practice um, Chris will randomly yell interception in the next five minutes and then we'll do a bonsai. You know what that is? Hashtag bonsai. Uh, Vito, here's what I want you to do. Pick out a nice prize for me right now and announce what that prize is going to be. It's like something from the pretty good prize closet. Make it nice. Look how slow he's moving. <laughs> My wife is nice. Do you know what the pretty good prize closet is? <laughs> I know. I gotta. Go, we're we're reinventorying it right now. I'm gonna go. You don't have a list of prizes in case I tell you at any time. We're we're currently redoing it because we're we had to change up the office. But what would happen right now if I said we're giving away a prize? What are we giving out, Vito? We're gonna give away Happy Gilmore, signed by Dennis Duggan. Duggan. Dugan. 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 Do you have it? Yeah, we have it. So when Chris yells out interception sometime within the next five minutes, it's hashtag bonsai. Hashtag bonsai. At the Bennington show so we can see it. And Chris, read the rules as fast as you possibly can. If you do hashtag bonsai for the first interception, you're disqualified from the game. You have to use the hashtag hashtag bonsai spelled exactly like that. You have to tweet at Bennington show. All judges are final. And the winner is the first person who shows up at Bennington show feed from as they see it. If your feed shows something different, that doesn't make you right. So what you tried to say is if you do it before the first interception. Yes. You can Because you said for it. Before. Before the first interception. Do not even try to test it out. No. Now, if you're fi- following on Twitter, 
when you see the word interception, you know, to make sure, because I know a lot of people get different, you know, feeds here and stuff like that. Um, everybody has a chance to be on the same type. So just follow the Bennington Show Twitter. When Chris yells out interception, sometimes in the next five minutes, and this is just to let you know, when this happens during the game, no one's going to yell interception. There's going to be an interception. There's going to be an interception. Now, people say, why do you do the Bonsai Show? And that's because when I was on the Chichester Crusaders, the idea was to yell out Geronimo. <laughs> So that explains it all. Yeah. The only person I ever saw do it was Richie Dentine in practice. And I started fucking cra cracking up. I'm like, yeah, I forgot we were doing that bit. <laughs> My coach didn't like me too much because what I tried to do was play football, not work at football. I still tried to have fun. Isn't it a game, though? Yeah. You're playing a game. Yeah. Not working at a work. <laughs> So let's stop taking it so seriously. You know? <laughs> we're down by 30. There's no way we're coming back. Let's think of some funny things we can do to make the other teams look like dicks. <laughs> like when I played defense and the other team had a huddle, yeah. and they would come back, I would go like this to the guy across from me. What did he say? <laughs> Was he talking about me? <laughs> did he say something about me to you? <laughs> Tell me the truth. What did he say to you? And I thought that was funny. <laughs> and I used to put a piece of tape on my helmet and write something bad about the other team. Oh, nice. Like, yeah. It's like something about their moms or something. No, no, not that far, but something that made fun of either their neighborhood. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think once I thought, isn't it nice to get away from the fat girls? I wrote that up. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Or I would write, your dad doesn't have a real job. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I know the coach would go, would you take that off your helmet? And I go, what? Who put that up here? It's fucking guys, coach. I got to tell you the truth. Mm -mm -mm. So anyway, uh, GPS Seattle. Seattle on Saturday. Deep tracks, three o'clock. Interception! Why did you yell that out? Hashtag bonsai. Is that what they're going to do during the game? Say hashtag bonsai. They're going to tweet hashtag, at hashtag bonsai to at Bennington Show on Twitter. When there is an interception. When there's an interception in the Super Bowl. Is it really the Super Bowl? It doesn't feel like it's it. Not to at me. all. Does not feel like the Super Bowl to me. This is like the least exciting Super Bowl I remember. I'm excited. And it could about end up being a great game. Hopefully. Because it doesn't have great hype. Yeah. You know? And then we'll walk away from it like, I really enjoyed this Super Bowl. The season ended yeah. well. It was truly a Super Bowl. Every At the end of um, every season, I like to say this to all the teams. We had joy. We had fun. We had seasons in the sun. You say that to each of them? Each of the teams, I go around and talk <laughs> to them specifically. That's nice. And some of the commissioner now. <laughs> what happened to Goodell? <laughs> yeah, no one liked him anyway. Um. Oh, the winner is Nicole G. Nicole G. Yeah, Whoa! Nicole G. Love Nicole G. What did she win again, uh, Vito? She's winning Happy Gilmore, signed by director Dennis Duggan. Dugan. Dugan. What is wrong Dugan. with you, dude? I, I sat, here for, sat here for two minutes going, don't say Dugan. Don't say Dugan. Don't say I know. It is Dugan. No, I know. That's how I just fucked myself over. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you said at hashtag Bennington. At Bennington Show. Hashtag oh, Bonsai at Bennington Show. <laughs> You're not you going to get me. A genius! Yes. Genius. Bronny the musical. <laughs> Bronny the musical starring our own fucking Bronny. Vito. So cute. Uh. 
<laughs> so what's up in Chicago, Jan? Is she ready for the Super Bowl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm watching it by myself, but that's good. Good. I like to watch games by myself. Yeah, it feels good. I watch every game of the year by myself until the Super Bowl, then the yeah. kids come over. Because they know there's going to be good food. Exactly. Yeah. Beats this year. No. Lots of beats. So have a big plate of beats. <laughs> I'd be grateful for that. You want more beets? I'll yes. be like that. I don't. Have some more beets. They're good for your eyes. I don't want the sugary. beets. It's like nature's candy Mm-mm. and poop. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be watching it in a club. I wanted to like beets because of the color and the dye, you know. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I like to consider like nice pistachio color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might get some pistachios. Where are you uh, watching the game? But club? I'm, so I changed it now. I'm not going to be really. Going I'm just doing the brunch, and then I'm going home and watching with my mom. Because nobody to wants her. to watch the game with you. They're like, we. They're actually like, I told them my plans, and all of them are like, okay, we're just going to come to your house. I'm like, no, no, I just That'd be great. To watch it. Bring them over. But I just wanted to be with my mom and watch it and Why? Just have some mom time. Aww, Aww that's Aww. sweet. <laughs> you love your mom. I really do. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. And you love your dad. Yeah, we're happy, but okay. you know. Why? What's it's just, you know, my, my half sister came back to live with him. Yeah. So I got kinda got booted out of that room. So I'm a little sour about it. Oh <laughs> they're beefing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's a whoa. Yes. <laughs> what would be something that was saucy? Like, yeah. <laughs> saucy, not spicy. Got it. Or sassy. Uh I uh I just Found out that our guests are going to be here, right? In a moment? Yeah. This is the most exciting thing I've ever heard. And where's our intern at? He's, he should be, he's in, en route. En route. He's very en route close. is not what I want to know. How Ele- far away is he? He's in an elevator right now. Here? Or in, in another in, building? In, no, no, in this building. He's in an elevator. In this building. <laughs> um, so uh, it's John Early. Yeah, and Kate Berlant. And they're a uh, new web series is uh 555 and it's on vimeo um i think it's vimeo vimeo.com slash 555 that's it but i guess if you just go to vimeo.com there's a link to it they're the funniest funniest sketches i'm a huge fan of theirs i what do you call it when you watch everything at the same time binge, binge. you binge i binged it yeah that's I, binged. I, did. I binged it but it's quite an easy binge i didn't want to binge it yeah i'm like i don't want to binge this i want to savor it couldn't Mm-mm. help it. Like with everything else, I kept binging. <laughs> like everything I've ever done, I just binge it. You know, like, I want the six pack to last a while. Nope, nope. binging it. You Get know? It all out. Yeah. I love a good binge. Or look, I got enough Coke to last me all weekend. Mm-mm. No, you don't. You're going to stay up and binge it. That's You're going to binge it. Love a binge. Uh, all right, Janice, we'll talk to you soon, honey. Bye, Enjoy Janice. your Super Bowl. And coming up in less than an hour, it's our salute to the Super Bowl. 45 comedians will be on with us. It's the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for the biggest for football's biggest game of the year, which premieres today at 2 p.m. and it re-airs tomorrow at noon and on Sunday at 2 p.m. East on Raw Dog. That's fun. That was good. Chris. That's great. That was That's really excellent. good. Thank you. Uh, so we will uh, break. Be right back with our special guests. John Early and Kate Berlant. This is Bennington. John Early and Kate Berlant are in studio with us. John and Kate are performing a sold-out show tonight at Joe's Pub in New York City. John and Kate's miniseries 555 is streaming now on Vimeo. Go to vimeo.com slash 555 to view it. And they'll be screening the first episode of 555 and performing at the Underground Arts in Philly on Monday, February 6th. Uh, Underground Arts dot org for tickets five 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 is amazing guys seriously it's so great. Thank you. Oh, it is you. so goddamn funny i can't stand it oh my god I'm we're so, so happy wow thank you <laughs> what uh what made this the the project why was it the five 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 I had a dream when I was pregnant with John's, <laughs> sorry, our son. Thank um, you. <laughs> no, we just, I mean, the you know, we have made videos together and with Andy DeYoung, who directed them. And 
we just sort of had a bunch of ideas. Yeah, we had like a backlog of ideas. Mm-hmm. And there's kind of one category of those ideas that always like would require money, you know, mm-hmm. and the specifically <laughs> because these ideas hinged on kind of like a cinematic, like archetypal, like lushness, you know, so right. we can't make these alone in a day. Right. We're used to it. And also five years ago when like you had a line on Lizzie McGuire, I had a line on 30 Rock, we could not get money, you know? <laughs> so, like, yeah. so thankfully now, like, people, like, Vimeo was willing to take a chance, and, um, and yeah, we got to make these five, like, really kind of moody, fun shorts. Well, there's, you know, we were, we were talking about this because we were wondering how much of it is written in advance and how much are you guys improvising? A lot of it is improvised. Yeah. When you're yeah. watching it, the majority yeah. of the dialogue and everything is... On the spot. Yeah, uh, I think it's like 90%. I'd say 92. Let's okay. Say yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, but <laughs> it's, um, we, we definitely wrote scripts for these and they were, they had to be super structured because we had like a proper production company that was like begging us to write scripts. <laughs> like the night before, we we're like, ugh. <laughs> um, but Writing's we, hard. <laughs> yeah. But we would come in with a big list of just kind of jokes or ideas we wanted to talk around and. And yeah. then the the stories are also kind of like lightly intertwined. Yes. So was that the plan from the beginning or you just decided to kind of thread them sort together? Sort of. We were, we, couple, we were like yeah. turned off originally. We were like, maybe we'll uh, link them. And then we felt it felt kind of contrived. And then we found in editing, we found ways to yeah. connect them like the tube, like in the right. mother, just, like the little boy looking out the window and seeing the <laughs> tube that is la- later in the age and saying, that was like totally like, what do we do for this window shot? We're like, oh, there's right. a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this will be fun for the people who haven't seen it. But, you know, uh, it reminds me of the way Christopher Guest works. What an honor. And um, I think uh, Monday I'm doing this thing with Eugene Levy and oh. Catherine O'Hara. Oh. And, the uh, that was a groan of joy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I just want that to be clear. But that's how everybody feels about it. so much. Yeah. That's how, and you know, Eugene is very funny, but Catherine O'Hara, there's something about her that's like magic. She's, she's a god. And funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. thinking about her, I get starstruck because I've loved her since I was a kid. And I think, yeah, your uh, 555 has a lot of similarities to that where it's just like that perfect kind of cringe humor. But then you're also <laughs> like, God, I know that guy. I know, yeah. I know yeah. her. Like that's I've so been nice. in that situation before. Yeah. Um, particularly anybody who's dealt with anybody in theater or acting yeah. i mean <laughs> i had just like really bad flashbacks during like oh, no. the acting uh there's like an acting class and i was like oh, oh that's God. so that was great so <laughs> that was hilarious. Is just like, have you been in an acting class uh yeah i went i went to a uh, performing arts high school here in the city laguardia uh no sorry 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 <laughs> no that's per- their arch rival how okay. could you ever say uh it's a professional performing arts school yes. which is actually yes. on the same street a couple avenues yeah. i've only moved a couple avenues avenues over <laughs> yeah. in Good. life um but yeah it's it just like that idea of just taking that so seriously of course it's just like oh god i know that i know that it's so, well, it's so us exactly it's like <laughs> as much as we were like kind of poking fun at it it is i've been in those exact acting classes and we and yeah. we take our own stuff so seriously and care about it so much that it is nice to kind of puncture it a little bit <laughs> is it true that's how you, you guys are very serious about this kind of comedy You're very precise with it we are yeah. yeah i think that's just naturally what we find funny is like very specific behavioral tips yeah. and so that's what we're always striving to to capture in our stuff or let that sort of lead the way well the reason that you want to rewatch these two is because the reaction pieces are <laughs> funny as hell and you don't always catch them the first time you know what yeah. I mean? There's always these little tiny moments. And uh, going back to guests, that's why I could watch those movies 50 times and and pay attention to a different character. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been talking about Waiting for Guffman. Waiting for Guffman yeah. like, yeah. changed my life when I saw it when I was a kid. Yeah. And so, any so that's a the hugest compliment. Yeah. And yeah. and they're, specifically in Waiting for Guffman, they're like the, the tenderness of it. Like, yeah. the, the, the sweetness of seeing these people kind of like get the opportunity to suddenly be on camera <laughs> and to like, <laughs> and like, and they're just kind of enjoying performing themselves on yeah. camera. That is so, such a fundamental part of our sense of humor is like, people performing themselves and mm-hmm. reveling in like i'm in a play yeah <laughs> like john was pointing out and waiting for god in that specific moment when mm-hmm. eugene levy kind of is like 
talking to Christopher Guest, and he's like, now when I come out from behind this, like the, the horse. prop horse, he's like, <laughs> yeah. I go like this. I, it's like all those little details are, are bragging about striking to do. the soul of the <laughs> Yeah, just loving, just yeah. reveling in that. And... <laughs> Yeah, we really, yeah, because that's the exact kind of stuff you could rewatch it a million times. Yeah. Like I even rewatch a lot of those, um, like the deleted scenes. Like once yes, I the like, found Posey. those, yeah. I was like, Parker oh my Posey. god, the How monologue. You- yeah, <laughs> I know. Which I just have to say, I performed for a child agent as an audition piece, and they <laughs> didn't sign me. Believe it or not, <laughs> that's a huge mistake. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, and Parker's one of those people, she just fit, fit into that group because they were doing all that before she came in. Right. And uh, she's she's in the last one that he had just Oh, yeah, the mascots one. Yeah. yeah, the mascots one. But she was just brilliant and fit. And it's always amazing, like, who fits into that world yeah. and who would be really funny but not fit into that totally. world. Totally. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's, I think, very inspiring to us, too. I mean, and that's, I think, what's so su- like so sweet about all those films is, and also like John Waters movies, like right. yeah. the way he like brings his crew with him to every single movie, even up until like his most recent movies, like yeah. Mink Stoles and all of them, you know, yeah. he, he just, I, I think there's something so nice about bringing your friends along and like, and we always do that with our projects. We have a lot of our friends in this one. Um, and it's nice. I feel like there's something so like, punk about yeah. like yeah, having yeah. your, like, right? it's your like crew. in a band now yeah you know? absolutely yeah and that, and that was always the, the great thing about a band is that they were all from the same neighborhood you know yeah. like, the original bands were like gangs you know what <laughs> i mean the stones were a gang the beatles <laughs> right. were a gang from different parts of town yeah um so when you guys put this together it's just an idea that you're like okay you know us they're and makeup all, chairs they're all sort of <laughs> each short is kind of revolves around a dynamic yeah. of two characters so we usually initially come up with like the relationship right like it's a mo- stage mother and her son or something and then from there kind yeah. of the rest of it or we have we're very visual thinkers <laughs> and so you know a sunset no, but we do, <laughs> and then boom yeah, yeah yeah i think of velvet and then there's the character <laughs> but, <laughs> no yeah we like uh, there's like each one kind of has its own different origin like like the pop one was definitely like it was loosely based on De- debbie deb who sings when i hit me like cause she was like totally screwed over she was like discovered in a karaoke bar yeah. she's like 17 recorded the when i hear music with like a sleazy producer and then like you know before she knew it there was like a hot girl on the cover of the album and she didn't get any money and like no one knew it was her and 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 i think now she's fine she like got a good attorney but we we were like obsessed with that story and that song and the tone of that song and that's where that came from and then the mom one was like we were just kind of dreaming of kate and like you know kind of tony collette i wanted acrylic yeah Yeah. like that kind of a performance of like the working class mother like and um and then like the actors one was just like us like we were just dying laughing thinking of us as like very straight like sensitive and i will say if you enjoy that one particularly check out santa monica yes. which is the name of a short that we did with andy DeYoung also and where we play a straight couple and john playing straight is just always has always destroyed me it's like the thing that makes me laugh just that the most <laughs> yeah he's so good at it so hey, thank you so it was like let's just build something on yeah. being straight yeah we were like what if we like were on a bed together and we're just like and we really pushed ourselves to not send it up and to try to like realistically fall in love. Yeah. Like that was, what was so exciting to us and like so, and so squirmy. We were like, Oh God, are we, we were so scared to do it, but we were like, we cannot make a joke out of it. Just like literally try to like be small and like, and like, and we like, there's so, there's so much extra footage that couldn't make it because of time, but there's like stuff where we're like checking each other out (laughs) and like getting really nervous. And like, it's so good. It's so good. (laughs) You know, uh, one of the things I always think runs together with these characters is they're always trying to be present and they're always trying to have empathy and they fail all the time. <laughs> right. Totally. You know I mean? Yeah, they're all, they're like so obsessed with being present that they're not, they're like right. the opposite. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, and that kills me. That just slays <laughs> me every single time. Yeah, the extras character, especially, like they have that thing where you, you're, you want them to succeed and then you don't at all. Like they drive you up a wall, but you're like, 
<laughs> but you kind of feel terrible for I them know, too. They're sweet. Totally. They're really, really sweet. <laughs> but that is the best kind of character, the like Jeffrey Tambor character mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Larry Sanders, Ugh. where you hated to see him fail. You hated to see him. But then the second he succeeded, he became a complete asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was nowhere totally. ever to feel okay about him. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's an honor, too. Uh, by the way, too, the thing that I think separates you guys from the earlier generation is none of them did stand up. All the early SCTV people that did improv never walked out on the stage, but you guys, you guys do both. Well, Lord knows we could use the training. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're fine. But well, yeah, that is interesting. Like, I think it's, it's, cut, it's a generational thing because I think improv, um, then was in a really probably organic new place. Right. By the time we were coming up, improv classes had become very commodified. They were like required mm. by the government. Right. Right. Now yeah. it's like they have to. It's like enlisting in the draft. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like you go like there are now everyone has caught on to this thing of like if you start at UCB then like you'll eventually be on a like huge NBC sitcom. You know yeah. that everyone has watched that trajectory happen with like Amy Poehler. You know so like all these you take it like i took an improv class here in new york at ucb and it was like literally all like musical theater actors who were not funny had no interest in improv yeah they just knew that they needed to take a class yeah like some like trashy like agent had been like take a class <laughs> yeah i took Clearly. a i took a one an improv 101 class when i was 18 and i was <laughs> going to college upstate and i was taking the train into the city and my male teacher told me like he was like eh. he just kind of <laughs> told me i wasn't funny and i was like Goodbye forever. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> and then I became back. so resistant to any kind of training from right. then forward. And it, maybe it has injured me. <laughs> no, craft no. wise. <laughs> but yeah, I think stand up gave us the opportunity to, like, we didn't know each other for a long time. I know, all through <laughs> um, all my time in utero, didn't know you. <laughs> didn't know you. Yeah. Uh, before I was born, I didn't know you. Um, yeah, but I, uh, the, we, we, we were doing stand up individually a long time before me, but I, it, I think it gave both of us um, the opportunity to like, develop our sensibility without being. Um, you know, like in a kind of a non cult environment, <laughs> and actually a very kind of sacred, yeah. like um, yeah. free space. It was nice. Well, they always say that the improv people are so supportive of each other, and that stand ups are competitive. Yeah, with each. Other. I feel so much support in stand up. Me too. Yeah. I feel yeah. such a tight community from stand up. Yeah, I've I, never experienced that. No, me neither. I've, I've obviously Wrong. had moments. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Um, but uh, but no one does just one thing anymore. Either. Know. You know what I mean? And honestly, it's a shame. Yeah. Stick I to know. your one. Yeah, people that made shoes, they made shoes. They didn't also. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right. Now there is this thing of like I write and I act and I have a screenplay and I not ha ha and right. I'm the voice and of I run my own social media <laughs> and I have a to podcast. Be funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, even I know. in the last ten years, like I think about when I started stand up and. It, it's just changed so radically in 10 years. Yeah. Like who was sort of doing it 10 years ago? It was still kind of weird. Like, why are you doing that or something? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Still... And now there's like a comedy boom and now everyone's doing it. And I think that, it's you like know. weirder if you don't do comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also that's just because we're in these like tight communities. Right. Where that's who we're around a lot, but, but there's all different genres of comedy now. So yeah. it used to just be stand up comedy, you know, MC three acts, boom. Right. That's and that's it. the good news, especially for people like us who we, we may, some people may find us to be an acquired taste, but yeah. I don't know. I would also argue that we're very broad and accessible. Please, hire <laughs> us. Please buy our show. Please buy our show. I kill in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is Do you nice. like the road? Do you like to be out on the yeah, road? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's really, yeah, I, I can fall very easily into the romanticism of like, being in a double tree alone, like literally yeah. in yes. Indiana, like I'm doing it. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. So I, it I, is I get so really fun. turned on touring alone. Yeah, it's it's hot. <laughs> it's like I, like hotels make me horny, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but that's why it's good when we're together. And yeah. it's we really so fun. Much, we get we literally like we save so much money touring together because we don't we share a bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're so literally we share. We've been money. sharing a bed for like ten days, and it does make that's the beauty of of touring together and doing shows together is that literally just the hell of like going to the airport. There's 
there's someone else there. I know. It's so nice to have you there to like, I mean, like she, yeah. when we were at the Vancouver airport recently, we were, you know, it was so miserable, just the, all the customs and stuff. And, and Kate like started talking on a banana in the <laughs> um, security line. She yeah. just was like, and it was like making me die laughing. And like <laughs> literally half the people in the security line were like freaking out. <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's nice. And now we have a Instagram video series called Banana Phone. Banana Phone. Check <laughs> it out. <laughs> and you, you, you know, I always think the best thing is like you're in here today, but you go to plug Joe's Pub and it's already sold out. That's always the best possible feeling isn't it oh that, totally you know you're not waiting for that night yeah there's always a big walk up here <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like to know in advance doesn't matter what size room it's sold out it's so oh. nice yeah, yeah. Joe's, so joe's pub's the only place that happened four nights at joe's pub sold out and that's the only narrative that i have of myself <laughs> in my life. it's not like we need to sell in dc or philly please buy tickets now <laughs> <Kate Berlant. laughs> um yeah, yeah no it's really nice it's nice to have like a new yorkers want to see us who miss us and nice. yeah but we, we've had great, we were in Toronto and Boston and had amazing Oh shows. yeah, amazing. Yeah. And we were so scared, but they were so good. <laughs> what What would you think was that tipping point that people knew who you were and started to buy tickets in advance? You know, like that point. It's something about our videos together. People, mm -hmm. we really, it's really nice. Like we've never really had to try that hard to sell tickets for shows. Once we started making videos together and people caught on to a few of them, we would announce a show. And it obviously also just helps that there's two of us. There's yeah. yes, double de the definitely. selling power. And I think also we both did this show on Netflix called The Characters. And yes, we appeared in each other's specials. Yeah. So I think that also helped people just like think of us together. Yeah, totally. And then Search Party uh, last year was a, a really, really cool show. Thank right, you. Yeah, right up until hurt. I'm like the last episode going, how is there going to be a season two? No, I, I, trust me, I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah, it's a crazy ending. Yeah, it's an amazingly dark ending to this kind of a light fun sweet show yeah and then that ending was like what everybody wanted the sopranos are lost to be yeah but, yeah. yeah it's a very satisfying ending <laughs> but it's also i think it's like one of the best shows i've seen where the ensemble cast is fleshed out like so perfectly. very very true like yeah. all of those characters your character is incredible it's but there's so much attention to that detail that yeah. it's just like an incredibly addictive show. Yeah. No, they, they really like were very deliberate in like giving each character something to do versus just like <laughs> it would be very easy for me and Meredith, who plays Portia. It would have been very easy for us to just kind of sit back and exactly. do the last, which I would have loved doing. Yeah. But it was cool that they also wanted to like, you know, make it richer. But I remember like the first episode, I'm like, okay, Portia's the girl I'm going to hate. And then yeah, I love so, her by yeah, the end of it. She's so you know? good. Yeah. She's like so, she's so sweet. So none of that, you, you were right when you said fleshed out, because none of that was like a regular TV show. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the, it's the golden era, you know, of TV. Golden yeah. age. Golden age. I think it's the golden age. Yeah. It's the golden age. It's the Trump era. <laughs> the oh, era. no. Yeah. yeah. People are getting so much freedom to just kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, like this Fimeo series is like the perfect example. It's like, yeah. I mean, you could not have ever sold this and done this kind of a promotional tour mm -hmm. for something no. this like free form like five years ago. Yeah, I mean, because what is it? It's a twelve minute per. Episode. It's like yes. what five twelve minute episode it makes no sense. <laughs> but just think before, how many shows would have been great if they would have done twelve minutes instead yeah. of thirty? Absolutely. Right? I mean, there's so much time that if you could even go back and watch sitcoms from the '90s, you're like, you see, they're just trying to fill. Yeah, yeah right. just fill for a while. <laughs> Start, Absolutely. Like, get to because the next that's. Joke. The toughest, the, the those writing for that kind of sitcom stuff is unbelievably brutal. Oh Absolutely, it's yeah. so hard. Yeah, people are um, tend to like pretentious comedy people tend to like. I, I resent when they um, kind of uh, can we curse? Yeah. I'm yeah. Trying, okay, <laughs> when they shit on. <gasps> um, oh, that's like, the one we can't. Oh, no. <laughs> no! <laughs> so I'm getting escorted out. out. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, those. I think both Kate and I really have a respect for like properly written like like structure and like joke writing. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah, like a twenty-two episode show. I'm yeah, like, yeah. What? How do you do that? And and also we can't do that. Like, <laughs> right. We are not making this as some sort of reaction to that. Yeah. Like we're, we're not we're not trying to like look where we are. This just is our sweet spot. Yeah. Like yeah. behavioral improvisation. Like moody, beautiful. Like that's our thing. That if being we, said, I, I am writing a sitcom 
first, Whoa. for CBS. Wow. And I play a broom and it's 22 episodes. <laughs> just watch me. It's me sweeping. Just sweeping? Yeah. yeah. Are you a sentient yeah. broom? Do you talk or is it? Oh, I talk. I yeah. Talk, yeah. But my mouth doesn't move. It's more like I'm communicating through. Can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah. And remember, it's got to be 48 to 60 jokes in that 24 yes. minute episode. We've got it. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. We, we hit our, we hit it. <laughs> I, that math that it takes, like, if you just look at the math of of a friend's episode, oh, it's oh my God. six of them have to have punchlines. Like, if you just yeah. sat there and did joke <laughs> counters yeah. through the yeah. entire thing, it's insane. Was there ever an episode of Friends where one of them wasn't in it? I don't, not that I know, maybe, yeah. you know, so. maybe in the early days, but if you, if you even did a word count, they all just about have the same amount Whoa. of That's words crazy. between them. They just, it's never just like run off and it's about Joey and the other ones have a small part or something. Yeah. Like yeah. They used to do on Happy Days. This is just everybody's agents were like counting. Or, hey, totally. Hey, everybody's, you know, we're all stars here. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, well, we're the Vimeo series. We made a million per episode. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that is Which so we modeled. Good. We said to our attorneys, look at the Friends contract. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. That's and your, you can do that as your starting point. <laughs> yeah. It's just a boilerplate <laughs> Friends contract. <laughs> you just scratch out Joey's name and write it. Exactly. <laughs> so do you guys have like career goals or is this just one project to the this next? Is it. I just bought yeah. a ranch <laughs> upstate and I'm going to go just hang out on the ranch. I'm so excited. <laughs> and make, yeah, but no, we're, we're working on a show right now. We're trying yeah. to get a show made. There's nothing really to say because it doesn't exist yet, but it is a more yeah. kind of traditional capital C comedy. Yeah. yeah. And so we're working on that right now. Yeah. And then we're both. We're, we have kind of like dreams of um, having the kind of career where we could like a French and Saunders like kind of thing where we could be like in 20 years, we could just do an hour long special, you know, mm -hmm. or like, or do five more of these shorts or, right. you know, it's the um, only way I'll work in my fifties. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think we both want to make movies and we want to work with great directors, but we, the big priority is to make stuff um, for ourselves. Yeah. And to do that, you want to keep it as tight as possible, right? As small as possible, you know. Small in what way? And small in like, Who's oh, there's involved? only a couple of characters. Yeah, the, the, yeah, know. definitely. I, yeah. It's also just a result of us together on screen. <laughs> like, neither of us are, are really like, neither of us is like the straight man who set, set, stands yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Both yeah. of us yeah. take up a lot of the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so yeah. funny when like we've been writing this like more traditional thing for ourselves, and it like is not traditional in that like no one no else one can else speak. Speaks. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like, "Here's your coffee," and I'm like, "Thanks," and I dump it on my head. Yeah, it's like there's no. Yeah, the other characters only exist yeah. to like push us into places that we want to be. Yeah, basically. and the notes we always get are like, "Bring those characters out," and we're like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no, that's someone else." Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when did you realize like this is something that a person could do like to you know do comedy oh my god was it was an early age or well i didn't know you can say it <laughs> i was four and I, I mean i didn't have my parents aren't in i grew up in la mm -hmm. <laughs> but my parents aren't in entertainment or anything like i didn't have an example of like oh you can do that as a living or anything yeah. but i think i started i got really into stand up my senior year of high school and that's when i did it the first time and then I was like, huh. and that, and then I, from there, I just tried to do it as much as I can. But um, when did I get a sense that it was possible? I don't, I don't know. I'm still shocked. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Boss. it's definitely yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, yeah, you were just always doing it, right? Like you were yeah. doing it in college and even some in high school, and and then it, you just built momentum and it was real. I don't know. Yeah, I think just living in New York, it was always like at the end of my uh, high school, it was my dream to just be in New York doing stand up. Yeah, and I got there. Yeah, <laughs> and. What was yeah. the club? What was the club when you came to New York? What was like? Well, I was going to a school upstate called Bard College, mm -hmm. and I was doing comedy in the woods for no one. <laughs> and then I was coming into the city, and I wasn't at clubs. I mean, I got put on a UCB show in yeah. UCB Chelsea, and that was my first sort of real show, and it went well. And I was like, <gasps> Oh my god, no! But I just so I, from then I just it just encouraged me to keep going and then i really liked rafifi in the east village and yeah. that's like the comedy that i worshipped uh, when i was getting into stand-up was like this album invite them up that was all all of the people that were in that community doing stand-up and i got booked on rafifi the week it closed the week Damn. it closed meaning I, I got booked for the friday show it closed that wednesday yeah never did it and i was like well i quit 
<laughs> but, that's uh, it now. Yeah, I, mean, I got up at comics a few times. Yeah. Uh, but that's for the most part kind of where I was in New York mostly was downtown. Sue yeah. me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was it the same with you, John? Was, was it always like an alt thing or did you? It was mo- mostly an alt thing. Like I started like like a good chunk, like five years after Kate started. So like it. He's very precocious. I'm very precocious. <laughs> yeah. And um, but but I, you know, truly like thanks to Kate and her already being established in the New York scene by just by virtue of just hanging out with her all the time. I, we, I'd always kind of like be in that like in the green room at shows with her. And then because people could see that we were friends, they're like, Oh, he's cool. And they would, <laughs> and then she would like literally ask people to, you know, put me on their shows. And, um, and John, like, just like a year in was like as good as though he'd been doing it for like 15 years. Okay. <laughs> no, but it is true. It was the thing of like, yeah. oh my God. Like I, yeah. when we first started hanging out, I saw him and I was like, are you kidding? Me? Yeah. <laughs> That's so nice. But I mean, I, I think Kate and I have both really benefited from this like alt comedy scene, whatever, whatever that means. I mean, to us, I think it just means you're in spaces where you don't have to pay to see yeah. it. You know, yeah. like, like Kate ran a show at cake shop for how many years? Like five. Six, yeah. yeah. And then when she moved to LA, I took over and like, and I hosted a variety show in Midtown at Ars Nova. And, you know, we, we've gotten to like host these really, really great shows that, you know, yeah, you just kind of like don't have to pay to see them. I think that's, we, we're not alt in that we like are like, don't want you to laugh. <laughs> You know, after isn't the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want laughs. We absolutely yeah. we want to kill. Like I yeah. want to kill on a gay cruise. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I have no. I want. I want to be a populist comic. You know. Yeah. But yeah. but we definitely the for people like us who do have kind of a specific voice are literally just like a half Jewish woman in the game. <laughs> yeah. So you do have to kind of create your own space. So hosting shows gave us um, gave us a leg up, and then also introduced us to so many other comedians, and then put us on their shows and. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what people don't realize is like showing up is a, a giant part of it and just yeah. being there every night oh until people God. are comfortable. Totally. That's yeah. what, when I think about, and that's why I'm so glad I started in New York is that there were so many years of just going to shows every single night and that was my, completely my life, yeah. my social yeah. life. I had no other yeah. intention of, I mean, it just was everything. And it does take time because I've, I've already like, the cruel reality of aging is like now, I mean, like I felt like I was new for so long and then suddenly there were other people and I was like, what? Yeah, but I did, but like, I did feel that thing of like, there is like a period where like, I have to meet you like three times before I'm okay with you. Yeah. <laughs> like I am immediately like, you're not funny. Like I, it's so sad because yeah. I felt people doing that to me and I was like, I will never do that. Oh, it's so true. I think about the wall of just people with their arms crossed looking at me and I was like, no, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's scary. It I mean, is it is. scary, but, but eventually Everyone, everyone just loosens up and they can see you're funny and then it's all warm and friendly. Well, that's the thing is that you're always around hungry people because they're out every night yeah. wishing they had that five minutes, wishing, you know what I mean? And there's going to be in the back of their head like, why? Why that person? Why not me? You know, so it, it is a churn. Um, but I think when you get to a point where you're comfortable with yourself, you can kind of help those people become yeah. comfortable yeah. you know totally. like a big part of it i think of maturing into the scene is just like dude calm down yeah. there's like always going to be <laughs> totally more spots that's the lucky yes, thing yes yeah. yes well you guys are great thank you so much thank you so this much was such a for pleasure. coming in. we had no idea we've just been so blind to our press schedule we had no idea what we were doing <laughs> yeah. this has been so lovely <laughs> yeah it's so well, nice uh we're, we're big fans and we we uh but we're, we're also expecting big things uh-huh. yeah. right shut now. up we're expecting really <laughs> big things and i'm going to tell Catherine o'hara about you guys I'm oh my well. god i'm going to faint i'm going to bring this i'm going to say <laughs> i've got two people i need you to work with oh, oh my Write god her in. let's do that and that, that could be my Okay, like great. we've literally she's in. that she's, could be my thing to fame you're like oh i'll be the footnote of, i introduce <laughs> you guys perfect. that's yeah. perfect that i'm, I'm it's our greatest ready honor. for that history <laughs> she's the, our real. greatest actress john early and kate berlin they're performing a sold-out show tonight at joe's pub in new york city you can check out their mini series 555 it's streaming now on vimeo vimeo.com slash 555 to view it uh, and they're screening their first episode, 555, uh, and performing at the Underground Arts in Philly on Monday, February 6th, and also performing in Washington, D.C. at the Howard uh, Theater this Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. We love you. Bye. Love them. That was so great. 555 is the show on Vimeo. Watch it. You will not regret it. Turn this up. You won't regret it. 
I highly recommend. Thank you your favorite show, and this is a hundred times better. <laughs> Did you get the feeling that they liked me more than you? Because I was just gonna um, kind of felt bad for you why that was happening. I kind of was feeling like if you just went by their body language, yeah. I just kind of felt like they were like inching you out and like kind of opening. Really? Because it seemed like there was a wall up between you and them. Like mm-hmm. um, No. It's like a giant... wall of immediate friendship. Hmm. It just felt like it was uncomfortable. And at one point, I thought John Early was like, get me away from her. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, me? I can't. That's my daughter. I can't <laughs> side with you against her. I want to, <laughs> but I can't. I think we all made really great friends. I think, I think we just tried to do impressions of them for a second. It kind of was working. I kind of feel like you don't know what you're talking about. So, mm. Mm. Chris, you didn't uh, you didn't connect at all. Huh? What happened? No, there? I didn't. it's probably because I just I only saw the first episode of Five Five Five. I felt- saw them all. I binge watched. Yep, I binge. I'm gonna have a binge this weekend then. <laughs> Oh, good. Does that was do, now, do, Chris? Do, do, do. <laughs> like this was our time to make a connection. I screwed up. I'll, I'll I feel like I'm the person who discovered John early and told everybody. Like I start to tell the ad bag, I go, "You need to start covering John early." Yeah. <laughs> Get on the bus early. Early bird special. You kept saying, and we were like, "What?" And you were like, "Early bird special." <laughs> I hope, um, I hope this impression continues all weekend long. I can't find it now, but some little snowflake during it tweeted to us <laughs> that um, it was mad, mad because uh, Kate said something on Twitter. And, and then they, whoever it was wrote to us, these are the people you support. <laughs> <laughs> people get their little feelings hurt so fast. I know. It's so yeah. difficult for them with the militant left who's, you know, tough and crazy. And like, you know, that's. I would have. They're sensitive. Jimmy Woods on this show anytime. I would have John Voigt on this show anytime. I probably wouldn't have Chachi on the show because <laughs> there's nothing to talk about there. <laughs> but any of the. You know who is. Uh, he started a, a kind of secret society called Friends of Abe that was for right-wing Hollywood people was Gary Sinise. Really? Yeah, Gary Sinise. But what? he dissolved what? it around the Trump time. <laughs> really? Yeah. They're like, never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forgive me! <Yeah. laughs> I want to be the only friend of Abe. Yeah, it's a weird thing because it's like a friend's bill thing, I guess. Yeah. And like anonymous, everybody. <laughs> Let's keep our careers going. Um, anyway, 555 is it. Now, coming up, the big show you want to talk about. The funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. That's 45 comedians making their picks for the Super Bowl. Uh, for the big game, rather. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Search Party 2, by the way. Yes. It's a very, very funny show. If you have not seen Search it. Search it out. It's on demand, I believe, on uh, TBS. they the ones who yes, did it? Yes, it is. TBS. It was the first show that TBS ever released all 10 episodes. And I binged it one weekend. And I'm not a binger. Yeah. And you called me up and you're like, Binge this shit, bitch. And I was like, you don't have to call me a bitch. (laughs) But then Chris uh, Stanley, the man we call Christopher Peppy, uh, (laughs) booked them, and that was great. Yeah. Thank you. It was great to have him on. Thanks so much, Chrissy. I should have Chris, 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 this is the biggest game there is, so it makes sense. This is the big game, and we're going to be hearing from the funniest people on the planet, which is always the best way to make your big game picks. Now, uh, Chris, make sure that you're keeping track of who voted for who so we know at the end. Make it like a Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. Uh, okay, I like this. How you should go. Now, you also have to remember, the Boston guys 
we know the way they're going to be rooting. <laughs> they none of them root against the Pats. No. Like that, that would be hor- I mean, I guess that would be the case if you were ever uh, um, a fan of any team. Like, no matter what, even if you think you're going to lose, you have to kind of commit to your team. Right. I do that with the Olympics. I'm always on Team USA, no matter who we're playing. And also, I always feel like USA is going to win the World Cup. <laughs> like, in my mind, I put money down. It's not smart. How can we not win? <laughs> All right, are we ready to start this out with the predictions? Here's a gentleman. He's got a brand new special coming up on CISO and also in Unmasked with me. I think he's one of the funniest people in the world, Mr. Nick DiPaolo. Hi, it's Nick DiPaolo. I think the, uh, I think the, uh, the New England Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl, 38 to 24. The reason being, Tom Brady is a hunk. I mean, just a piece of ass, this kid. And Bill Belichick's personality is uh, nothing to laugh at either. I think combined with a strong secondary and a um, flex defense and two transgender safeties, uh, they will win the game. The New England Patriots. Nice talking to you, kids. <laughs> Nick DiPaolo going Patriots. That starts Weird. us off. That's Odd. big. I mean, Nick DePaul is a patriot in many ways. Oh, yeah, of course he is. <laughs> Let's keep this rolling along. He's a Southern guy. So I'm expecting he's going to be the anti DePaul. Hey, it's comedian Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show. I'm telling y'all right now, Falcons by 10. Why? Because I am from Birmingham, and it's close to Atlanta. That's why. Final score, Falcons 38, Patriots 21. Okay, that's not 10 points. Screw math, Falcons. Now, I haven't been listening to people's picks beforehand, but I picked both those guys just from where they grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we got next, Gail? Next, we have Mike Cannon. Hey, this is Mike Cannon. Uh, I think the Patriots are probably going to win the Super Bowl 24-17, uh, more or less because Tom Brady can beat anybody that's not the Giants. Where was Mike Cannon interviewed? In a subway? He was in a hallway. <laughs> but I like the, the props to the Giants that he kind of gives. That makes me feel good about myself, even though they're nowhere near the Super Bowl this year. I don't think you should take that as a, a win for yourself. Gail, coming up next is one of our fame, uh, favorite people in the whole world and a real Cleveland Browns fan. We absolutely love her. It's Tammy Pescatelli. All right, so I think, now uh, I don't necessarily want them to win, but I think the Patriots are going to win because Brady has just put it to everybody. This is a year that people have been sick to their stomach, who's protesting. We're going to see grown men in safe space, taking safety pins and stabbing themselves in the eye because Tom Brady's going to get just one more glory. And I like, because I don't have a horse in this race. I'm from Cleveland. We don't even have a professional football team. So I think, uh, I think the final score is going to be 21-28 Patriots. You know, Tammy just brought up something that, it should be obvious to me, but it's not, that this is Brady's last Super Bowl. Uh, for some reason, I don't feel like it's going to be, even though at his age and his seventh Super Bowl, which yeah. is mind-blowing, it still doesn't feel like he's done. If he, But it's it's he's done no matter what, no. whether he wins or loses? Or? No, we're saying that he's at an oh, age yeah. where this could probably be the last time that he's able gotcha. to show up. That it, makes sh- sense. it should be. Like, but he's like 39. Yes, this should be. Oh, I mean, we should yikes. be amazed that he's here, but we're not. We're just like, yeah, of course he's here. It's, it's Brady. Uh, where are we on the voting so far? Who's leading? So far, Patriots are leaving. Both uh, Nick DiPaolo, Mike Cannon, and also Tammy Pescatelli all took the Patriots. Let's go with a real Philly street kid. I love this guy. It's Monroe Martin. Hey, this is Monroe Martin, and my prediction for the Super Bowl is the Patriots. Um, I'm thinking 28 to 17. I just feel like Patriots got more approved this year. And I don't know too much about the Falcons. That's it. All right. <laughs> Julio Jones, Monroe. I feel like we put Monroe out. He seemed like he didn't even want to be part of this at all. <laughs> uh, Paul Verzi is next. Now, Paul, I think, is a New York guy, but he opens 
a lot of shows for Bill Burr. So I kind of feel like that makes him a Boston guy, whether he wants to or not. We'll see where his allegiance stands. Paul Versey. Hey, this is Paul Verzi, and my Super Bowl prediction is the Falcons 28, Patriots 26. I think the Falcons' offense will be able to keep up with what the Patriots do and maybe make a big play on defense. It's the funniest people on the planet making the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. I got to admit, uh, you know, once we got out of Nick, I don't think anyone's tried to really be all that funny since. They're very, <laughs> people get serious about football. This is a very serious thing. They're like, funny, that's my job. This is some serious business. Next up, one of our favorite dudes ever, it's Open Mike Eagle. I don't know who's really going to win, but I want the Falcons to win because uh, I'll, I'll Came really close to liking Tom Brady, but he's too uh, pally with Trump, and so I want him to lose everything. I want him to lose really bad, in fact. So I think the Falcons are going to win like uh, seventy-four to three, and um, and it's because I don't like Tom Brady. That's my sound reasoning. Mike Eagle taking this thing to a political place, and a lot of people are asking Brady this week to comment on his buddy Donald Trump, and he's like, "No, I play golf with him." I don't know anything about politics, but I do know about golf. He owns golf courses. He puts me on. He plays with me, and we bet. What do you think of the pick for attorney general? Uh, I don't know, but I do know this. I won $25 in the third hole. (laughs) Uh, Next up on the big game picks, uh, he's on our list. He's on your list. It's Joe List. Hey, this is Joe List from Whitman, Massachusetts, birthplace of the chocolate chip cookie and the heart of New England. The Patriots will win. 41 to 34. Why? Because they have a lacrosse player from Monmouth College who carved up the Steelers' defense. That's why. 41-34. Go, Pat. 41-34 would be a very exciting game. But did you notice until he said hot of Massachusetts? I never knew that Joe List had that accent. It just popped out of nowhere. Yeah, like where did that come from? It's in the hot. It hits them all at certain points. (laughs) They can hide it as much as they want to, but it's, you know... You can smell that stink sooner or later. (laughs) Uh, What's the uh, roll call on this scale? Uh, It looks like we still have the Pats uh, leading here. We only have a couple uh, people picking the Falcons. Five to three. Patriots five to three are leading right now. Five to three. And there's 45 comedians as part of this? 45, yes. Let's see if this holds. Here is a young lady who is hysterical, and she's a thinker. Kathleen Madigan. Well, def- the Falcons, because that owner seems so fun. I mean, I, nobody paid attention to them all year. I feel like they didn't get talked about or anything. And Tom Brady. But then I feel like I don't know. I've had interview. I've seen interviews where I liked Tom Brady. I don't like Belichick. Who does? I don't think Belichick likes Belichick. He's just a grumbly, grumpy. I've never seen him smile. Even when they win, he's got his little notebook and he's walking around with his sweatshirt. Just all got to go get the plan for next year. Oh, my God. Do you ever just enjoy it? I don't know. Everybody hates the Patriots, I guess it seems like, except Boston people. But the Atlanta owner seems fun. They were all making fun of his dancing. All the players, they like him. All the players say nice stuff about him. I would say, and I think Atlanta's going to win. I saw the line was three. Yeah, I would definitely take Atlanta. All right. (laughs) Some gambling advice, too. Some gambling advice. Scale, who do we have next? Next up, we have the incredibly funny Kendra Cunningham. This is Kendra Cunningham, and I think it's going to be the Patriots all the way. And the final score is going to be 42 to 7. I, I think they're going to win just because they that's their, that's their reputation as being the winners. They, they always make the other team think they come out slow, make the other team think that they have a chance, and then in the third and fourth quarter forget it they get a little cocky and and they win the game that's a crush 42 to 7 42 to 7 is going to happen in the fourth quarter so that's their reputation the yeah. beat down. <laughs> how could that happen it could happen we've seen these kind of things happen anything is on the board for the big game uh this is the bennington show it's the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. We've got to learn and have smaller uh, titles for these shows. Can I go back to Philly for a second? Can I go back sure. to Philly and bring in Big Jay Okerson? Hey, this is Big Jay Okerson, and my Super Bowl prediction is stupid Patriots. I hate him so much. 
Target fuck is you. so gorgeous. Fuck you. Hey, you fuck you, you cocksucker. Fucking cocksucker. You fucking cocksucker. He's not my goddamn quarterback. It's going to be the Patriots. Probably something 34 to 20. Probably something 34 to 20. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Dan Soder is next. Hey, it's Dan Soder from The Bonfire and Billion, season two, February 19th on Showtime. And I think the winner of the Super Bowl is going to be the Atlanta Falcon, because birds can fly so high. Also, my best friend from seventh grade is one of the coaches. Uh, final score, I'm going to go 28-24 to 24 Falcon. Wow, that's a tight game. Yeah. And one of his buddies is a coach. Yep. Yeah. No, see, that's all I would take from me to root. Absolutely. I don't have any connection like that. But what about this? Big J and Dan. Big J taking the Pats, Dan taking the Falcons. It's like brother against brother. Well, they're not. You know what I mean? I mean, these two don't swim like fish. They're two individuals. When you listen to that show, The Bonfire, it's always point, counterpoint, <laughs> going back and forth. <laughs> Luis J. Gomez. Everybody likes the real ass dude. He's next. Hey, what's going on? This is the real ass dude, Puerto Rican rattlesnake, Joan Jett of comedy here. And uh, yeah, who's going to win the Super Bowl this weekend? Ah, the Patriots. Those guys have had a good career, I think. It's uh, it's a team that I hear uh, they their, their name comes up a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody's ever really mentioned the Falcons to me. This is the first time that I, and I really mean this, the first time that I'm even hearing that they're a football team. If you would have said what sport do the Falcons play, I would have said they're like ice hockey or, or uh, lacrosse, maybe something like that. I didn't know that because Falcons are not a very manly animal. Um, so based off of how aggressive and how manly uh, both of the things are, Patriots, very manly right now, very aggressive, building the walls, the whole thing right now. Got to go with the Patriots. They're on a roll right now. Uh, the score, I'm going to guess uh, 108 to 106. It's going to be a close game. Luis J. Gomez actually hosts a sports show. <laughs> yeah. And had never heard the term Atlanta Falcons no. before right now. By the way, he said right now like eight times. <laughs> I like that he's just, he's out there on the streets. He's like, look, I don't hear a lot of people talking about the Falcons. That's what I'm I'm basing this on. I just found out they were a team the other day. Although I do think his score could be pretty close. 108 yeah. to 106. You know, that'll be a <laughs> that'll be a lot of cheering that day. That's going to be exciting. That'll be an exciting basketball game. Who do we got next, Gal? Next up, we've got Seton Smith. Um, I'm hoping the Patriots win. I'm going to go with a weird score, like 35-29. Um, and I'm just hoping – I really want this because I really feel like <laughs> my boy's a Falcon fan, and the Falcons always wonderfully choke at the right time, and I'm hoping this is the moment where Ra Matt Ryan throws that interception at the moment where my boy <laughs> can cry. That's what I'm hoping for. Satan Smith, the only people to bring up history during this entire <laughs> event. Most of these people are just guessing, but Satan Smith has – Familiar with the Falcons history. And he's got a weird score. He's like 35 29. It's going to be a weird score. It is going to be a weird score. Who do we got next, Gail? Craig Gass. Craig Gass here, comedian. You might need to Google that. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm going to say Falcons. I think the score is going to be 40 to 28. It's just a random number I'm throwing out. Nobody's ever anywhere close to the number. You watch any predictions at the beginning of an NFL season before Super Bowl. Nobody's ever close. It's just a random dumb number that I'm throwing out. But I'm saying 40 to 28 Falcons because the Falcons just have an insane offense that they split amongst every. There's like it seems like there's 12 receivers on the team that are all racking up 20 to 50 yards a game each and. Uh, it's a really impressive team this year. So I'm, I'm just hoping for a good game and good commercial. Do you know that this time last year, Sports Illustrated predicted that the Patriots would go to the Super Bowl and would lose the Super Bowl? And guess to what team? Who the would, Packers? The Packers? 
49ers? They said that they would lose to the San Francisco 49ers. Really? They had the 49ers this year. Did they like? Did they even have a good season? No. Oh, God. They, no, no, they had a terrible season. They were one of the worst teams. <laughs> I'm going to, like, Louis J. Goldman. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about them this season. No one should have. <laughs> Hasn't been a bright year for them. Their coach got fired. Everyone got fired. Uh, Nate Bargatze, one of the hottest comedians in the country, will give his pick. Hey, it's Nate Bargatze. Uh, my prediction for the Super Bowl is uh, the Patriots went over the Falcons 38 to 34. And I think the Patriots are going to win. I think the Kyle Shanahan going to the 49ers is, uh, will be a bigger distraction than uh, than people think. I think when a coach uh, he always ends up leaving a team and it's right when this stuff's happening, like I think that just will be a big distraction. And Belichick is, uh, you know, best coach ever. So that's my prediction. Nate Bargazzi actually understands the game of football. And I couldn't tell if it was just like his voice, because he has such a great voice. I was just like, I trust exactly what Nate Bargatze is saying right it, now. It so- he sounds like he should be on college game day. You know what <laughs> I mean? You're like, oh, yeah, he is right about the SEC. They are good. Uh, loving it. Funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe. Tommy Pope. Well, I want the Falcons to win because I've, I've had enough Boston sports for a lifetime. I think they won enough. They, they conned America into feeling sorry for the Red Sox slump while having winning franchises in the Celtics, the Bruins, the Patriots. It's just too much. I've had enough Boston. Over. I just saw a trailer for an action movie today about the Great Wall of China. It's an all-Asian movie starring Matt Damon. Like I, I've had enough. So I want Atlanta. I think they're going to win 28-24. Delco Proper Zone, Tommy Polk, making this kind of regionally personal for himself. <laughs> he was. And blaming Matt Damon <laughs> doing an Asian movie. It makes a little sense. <laughs> He's moved me over maybe to the Falcons. It's starting to go that way. I mean, we're we're getting we're closing that gap now. Next up, we have Donnell Rawlings. This is Donnell Rawlings, and I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to win the Super Bowl because I had two ex-girlfriends from Boston. I hate everything about Boston. Boston baked beans, Boston clam chowder, everything Boston. And there's way more black people on the Falcons, and I connect with that. So the brother's going to do it, and the score is going to be 34 to 21 Atlanta Falcons. Let's go. Again, making it personal about ex-girlfriends. I mean, this is personal. I mean, he doesn't like Boston baked beans. It makes sense. This is the funniest people on the planet uh, making the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. And you start to hear some of this. And almost no matter what prediction I, I hear, I start to go in that direction. I start to believe. I'm like, I'm starting to really lean Falcons. Mm. Like I was, I at first thought Patriots, same thing. It just feels like there's so much buzz, but I'm, I'm really starting to edge towards Falcons. Luis J. Gomez didn't even know who they were, which worries me. Well, it's not bet on how popular you are <laughs> or what people like you. It's really about the players and the coaches and the game plan. And I don't know whether you guys think uh, that this is a popularity contest if that were true you know dallas would win every year and dallas hasn't won since the 90s thank god so for that reason i'm picking (laughs) uh jim florentine he's from new jersey but he's a miami dolphins fan uh two reasons for him to hate the patriots my prediction is jim is going to uh root against the patriots no matter what I'm going to predict New England's going to win 31-27. It's going to be close. But Tom Brady's been there, what, six times already. This is Matt Ryan's first time. The Falcons are not playing in the dome where that cushy dome where they used to complete in every pass. They're going to be outside, even though it's still going to be nice weather, but they're playing on grass, going to slow them up a little bit. And I'm going to take Brady six times at a Super Bowl compared to Matt Ryan once. It'll be like Cam Newton last year. He'll choke, but he'll, they'll keep it close. Patriots 31-27. And I'm hoping this comes true because I got 1,500 on the Patriots. All right. <laughs> Two things just happened there. Number one, Jim Florentine bets with his head, not with his heart. Came up with a lot of great reasons. And two, I don't want Florentine to lose a cent. No. I've met his son, and he's adorable. So I'm hoping the Patriots win now for Jim Florentine's sake. I'm worried about his college fund. 
Oh, that kid isn't going to college. <laughs> He's listening to too much metal and hard rock. No facts could ever seep in. Nico White is next. My name is Nico White. That's N-E-K-O-W-H-I-T-E. Now, as far as Super Bowl is concerned, I think the Falcons are going to take it. Why? Because they've never had a championship before. The Patriots have had all the fucking championships. So I'm putting my money on the Falcons. I don't know how they're going to win. I don't know what the score is. I'm calling, hmm, what's the interval of seven? 21 to 28. Falcons advantage. Because I don't watch football. How does he spell his name? He... <laughs> N e k o w h i t e Nico White, Giannis Papas next up, Gail. Uh, hey, it's Giannis Papas, and uh, this Super Bowl is personal to me because I'm a Giants fan, and the Patriots are just lucky they're not seeing Eli and the boys this year. I hate the Patriots like ISIS. So my prediction is from the heart. I'm not going to lie to you. This is not. This is not. I don't have money on the game. This isn't what my football expertise predicts. I just hope the Patriots lose. So I'm going to go ahead and make an emotional prediction, an emotional personal prediction, that the Falcons are going to win 24-10. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be Matt Ryan, Julio Jones all day. Now, I would think that if you were a Giants fan, you'd want the Giants to be the only team that ever beat. The Patriots. I think if the Falcons win this, it takes away from what the Giants have done. That's just my own opinion. Uh, Next up, a guy who's got a new special coming out. Everybody's crazy about Joe DeRosa. I'm going to pick the Falcons. Because the Falcons, I like the colors of the uniforms, and it's a cool bird. I predict they'll win by a landslide. That's my prediction. 42 to 0. 51, 50, no, 51, 51 to 0. Anywhere from 42 to 67 to 0 in favor of the Falcons. I might not even watch this game now. <laughs> it sounds like just a blowout. That's a crush. I mean, that's yeah. just going to be depressing. Everybody loves Greg Stone, but his best friend is Anthony DeVito. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way, like Anthony DeVito. It's funny to say, like, it almost feels like everyone's talking about it like underdog status, but they're so good. Like, they still have underdog status just yeah. because of the lack of popularity. Well, like, Luke Skywalker was good, but we really still thought Darth Vader was going to kill him. I mean, that was even an upset. <laughs> I couldn't believe it happened at the time. Uh, you know, if you got to do Anthony DeVito, you got to go to Greg Stone. I'm going to, with the U.S., uh, uh, Super Bowl, I'm going to go Falcons because Falcons fly. I'm going to go ahead with a score of 36 to 17 because Falcons fly, baby. Birds fly. You want to stay in the sky, Patriot? This guy, this guy's going to walk around as dumb. Birds, baby. Birds fly. I don't watch much football. <laughs> you ever notice that people who don't watch football really take the names more seriously? They take it seriously, and then yeah. they actually think. If a falcon were to fight a patriot, what would happen? A patriot would kill a falcon. He has a gun. Yeah. He has a musket. A musket. And a yeah. bayonet. It's going to take a while to load it. Yeah. He's going to have to get that falcon one shot. You know, these are very funny guys, but if you don't pay attention to football, you got to go to Paul, Paul Morrissey. Paul Morrissey knows sports. Okay, I'll do this for Chris Stanley. I'm Paul Morrissey. Uh, and my Super Bowl winner, my, my pick is... It's Patriots and the Falcons, but Donald Trump will sign an executive order to get his old team, the New Jersey Generals, in the Super Bowl. And Doug Flutie will actually get his uh, Super Bowl ring. By He's still the only guy in shape. But no, that's, uh, I'm joking, hopefully. I think the Falcons' time to rise up is this year. They will beat Tom Brady and the Patriots, and the final score will be 35 to 21. And you heard it here first. Well, yeah, we did hear it here first, but... <clears throat> that specific score, Paul. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but let me also say this, because he proved me right. He knew the New Jersey Generals, <laughs> and he knew Doug Flutie and Greg Stone. That would be Latin to him. I'm feeling very bold about my pick now, because my original pick is not too far off from his numbers, and now I'm feeling really good about it. Okay, good. Well, maybe this will make you feel worse. 
It's the one and only Mitchell Walters. Lock it up. Let's see. Sunday, February 5th, 2017. It'll be all New England. All New England. The high area code, 617 over 404. Even they're playing 713, it don't matter. It's all New England. Sunday, final score, 36-30. You know, I forgot this, but he always picks area codes, and he swears it's a good system, that the higher area code will beat the lower area code. I've never heard of this before, and now I'm officially obsessed with fucking looking at area codes. Well, first of all, you don't need to curse. Second, apologize. all he ever does is talk numbers. He sees numbers everywhere. He's like the Matrix, if the Matrix was a gambling addict. He's got and the number joke. Addict. He's got the other number <laughs> joke. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, Mitchell has never steered me wrong. He had me win the trifecta on a on a tip on a horse. All that seems great, but I know for a fact he keeps newspapers in his shoes. So <laughs> I don't know how much his stuff pays off. But I do know this. You can always trust Tim Dillon. Give it to the Falcons. Why? Because I don't know if we're going to have the Super Bowl this year. I think it might just be a race war. And I think the Whites are going to lose. And uh, so final score, I don't know. I think um, I think race war, uh, blacks by five. Is there a freaky Friday with Mitchell Walters and Tim Dillon? <laughs> Tim, pay attention to Mitchell because you're heading in that direction. <laughs> I think that was an official pick for the Falcons. Yes, started, it was. It was a Falcons pick. Which he Falcons. referred to as yeah. the blacks. Well, he, yes, I guess because of Hot Lana. Um, <laughs> Look, racism isn't over, folks. We're not going to lie to you about Mm-mm, that. No. This is the uh, the f- the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. And Tim went for the funny. Yeah, you know? he did. Now, I'll tell you somebody I can always trust, uh, and it's mostly stories, Tom Segura. Uh, you know what, man? Like, I, I, I feel like uh, it'd be really exciting, to be honest, to see the Falcons pull it off. I'm big on like, you know, cities like that are not regular uh, 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 people, you know, as making appearances in the game, Mm -hmm. uh, getting one. Um, I'm a big fan of Devontae Freeman, the running back. I'm uh, I think it'd be really cool, but I also feel like this is a laser focus. Fuck you, Roger Goodell year for the Patriots. And that makes me feel like, that they're going to be too much, and they're going to pull it off. So as much as I want to say Falcons, I think the Pats are going to do it. Picking the Pats, Tom Segura. Surprising. I thought he was going to go with Atlanta. It seemed like he was going with Atlanta. Yeah. It started to seem like he was leaning that way. I mean, he's the only person to drop Devontae Freeman's name so far. He doesn't bet with his heart. He bets with his head, okay? He's a smart guy. He's an intellectual, okay? He's our Howard Zinn. That's where we are right now. He's a goddamn think tank, Ron. (laughs) He is. is. Seriously, he's like a funny think tank. (laughs) Isn't it weird? We brought this up earlier, but like your mind just goes back and forth. Like everybody sounds somewhat correct. (laughs) I mean, until you get the area codes. Right. And then that's madness. That's the most. He's made the most sense out of anyone right now. That's what makes me feel crazy. You know what? I think you got to go with somebody in comedy that everybody loves. Am I right about that, Gal? I You are absolutely right. Let's go to Adam Ferrara. Hey, it's Adam Ferrara. Okay, it's Super Bowl time. It's uh, the Pats and they're giving three. All right, I'm a Jets fan, so they're the evil empire. I can't stand them. But Belichick's in this. He's gonna, he's gonna, he, Hogan a, is a lacrosse player, and he's catching passes. He's going to take away Julio Jones. Uh, Atlanta's defense is kind of suspect, so I think they're going to cover, and as much as it pains me to say this, I'm going to take uh, the Pats uh, 23, now nah, 27-24. Wow, 27-24. That's an exciting game. That's a push right there. Yeah. <laughs> He's going for the push. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's the exact score that uh, Madden had too. Madden did their like uh, their hmm. and went down to the last play. They to said the last play, and then Tom Brady throws a touchdown to Julian Edelman at the goal line. I did my own Madden stuff this week. Oh yeah, and whoever I'm controlling wins. Okay, I've, I played the Pats and won one big with the Pats, 
and I uh, played the Falcons and I won in a squeaker. And then I go, really? I'm not playing anymore now because I got both wins in, but I know I'm going to do it between now and Sunday. It sounds like the Patriots of the edge. This is your I mean, area, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Just... Well, I just know that if either coach had me, uh, if either team had me coaching, they would win and playing quarterback. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm simulating most of my defense. I get too bored. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to sit there. I know. Shit. It's stupid. Come on. It's stupid. I'm simulating it in Blitz 2001, so Bledsoe's starting for the Patriots. Let's go to uh, the morning man, all right? Late night comic, early morning radio man. He's everybody's favorite. This is Jim Norton. Hi, it's Jim Norton. I'm usually good at these. My prediction for the Super Bowl is that it's going to be New England 2-0. I think it's going to be scoreless up until about a minute left in the fourth, and then the safety is going to be the deciding factor. Uh, everyone so far has told me I'm an asshole, but I say 2-0 New England. <laughs> wow. I suddenly now see that clear. I think Jimmy's right. <laughs> A fourth quarter safety? Yes. <laughs> How fucking amazing that would be? Well, we, first of all, you don't need to curse. Second of all, just... I'm always prepared to do the safety dance. I don't know whether you know that. But if I see a safety in a game, I yell safety dance. Okay. And, and then we all have to jump up. And you can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Because your friends don't dance. And if you don't dance, then no friends of mine. Norton dance. Norton dance. Everyone. Look at your hands. I was going to say look at his pants. <laughs> wow, that actually does sound like an exciting Super Bowl ending. Just end on the safety dance. Well, this uh, next person, I uh, I feel bad for anybody who's got to follow him because I tell you something. Uh, when it comes to Derek Gaines, I can't follow that dude. I don't know about you, but I can't follow that dude. Hey, y'all! Now it's uh, Derek Gaines, uh, the Great Boy on Instagram. Um, my Super Bowl prediction. That's a my Super Bowl prediction. I think um, the Falcons are going to take it. They're going to win by. Uh, I think they're going to win by like thirteen points. I don't know why they are because I guess it's, it's the year for black. I mean, everything's going good. Fences was good. You know, hidden figures is good. Why not the Falcons beat the Pats? It's just poetry. Come on, bro. It's going to be one hell of a show. They're going to win by thirteen points. It's going to be one hell of a Super Bowl. I'm looking forward to it. Wow, did I turn into a racist for that? <laughs> I got Derek Gaines and Greer Barnes confused. Oh, no. And that can only be racism. <laughs> no. They're not even like, there's 20 years difference between them. <laughs> and I love both those guys. It's a lot of comedians out there. It's not racism. <laughs> oh, well, God. I didn't, I didn't like confuse like Adam Ferrer and Jim Norton. <laughs> I could tell them apart immediately. <laughs> this, show's, this show is now suddenly... Uh, Resistance. The resistance has to come against this show. If you, if it makes you feel any better, I oftentimes get, get, confuse our next comedian with uh, Mike Racine. <laughs> it's Mike Vecchione. Hi, this is comedian Mike Vecchione, and uh, I believe with all my heart that the Patriots will win the Super Bowl. I think that nobody's going to beat Tom Brady in the biggest game. Uh, Atlanta had a good run. They, Atlanta also looked too good. They look too good to be true. So I think they fall off a little bit, but I think it's a close game. 34-28, Patriots. It's so funny that you could say they look too good. <laughs> this can't use, last. <laughs> use that as an excuse of why they're going to uh, uh, lose. Well, that Mike Racine, I mean, there's no talking about him. <laughs> oh, it's Mike Vecchione. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it. It's so confusing. <laughs> it's all confusing right now, but... The big game is coming on Big Sunday. Mm hmm. <laughs> Love a good Big Sunday. <laughs> me too. You kidding me? They're delicious. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Don't put any of that pineapple on the top of it. Let's, you know. It's too much. Yeah. You Maraschino cherry? Are you fine yeah, with that? I'm That's fine good. with that. That's good. <laughs> but when they start to put little chunks of pineapple, I'm like, it's, there's something, it's getting into the ice cream. You don't want milk and pineapple together. <laughs> You know what I mean? It curls. That's what I'm saying. What are you thinking? It's curling the the uh, the fruit. Acidity, man. Come on. Anyway, that's what we're saying right now about the big game. Uh, it's a, do you know? As, does anybody know where we are in picks? Do we know who's chosen more? So I think the Pats are at 19 right yeah. now, and the Falcons are at 15. Starting to be a little distance. Yeah. I'm let's let's see if we can't tighten this back up. With the one and only Tommy Jonigan. 
I'm trying to. I'm, I think I'm going to go. It's hard to bet against Tom Brady because he cried this week and he eats so well. I think I'm going to go Patriots, and uh, I think they'll cover. And I feel like I think I'm going to take the over. And um, I don't know. I, I have no confidence in it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that last part? It all sounded good. good. I was about to fucking bend this shootout. All right, you don't need to curse, Chris. Oh, it's the special. Right. Yeah. This isn't the, the normal lousy Bennington show. No. We've got 45 comedians giving their picks. We don't need F-bombs in the middle of this. It's true. Then definitely don't need N-bombs if no. you're going in that direction. Oh, my God, no. No, no. never. Jesus. Never. C-bombs we're okay with. <laughs> yeah, they're great. It's 2017. We're fine yeah. with it. Yeah, they're great. Where my C-bombs at? That's what I always say. Okay. Oh. Come on. That's not how we use it. Oh, it isn't? Like, you're a C-bomb. It's oh. fine. Oh, but you're not like my C-bomb. Oh. oh God. This is, this is you know what? Call the HR. No, no, no. <laughs> you've ruined the special and you've ruined your career. Oh, Janet, God. He's at it again. Yeah, I can. I'll uh, my file. Who do we got next, Gil? Next up, we've got Shane Gillis. Uh, this is Shane Gillis. I think uh, the Falcons are going to win. I think they're going to going to win by fourteen. All right. I think it's going to be a big win. And uh, Julio Jones. That's the reason. Was that Louis C.K. saying that? <laughs> Shane Gillis. Oh my God! I go- I thought for it's, sure. Sounds like, just like Louis. How do we get Louis on this? This is great. Uh, Shane went the Falcons. Yeah. Wow. Uh, now our next comedian. You know, Boston born, Boston bred. Of course. Will he go against his beloved Patriots? We'll see. It's Robert Kelly. Hey, what's up? This is Robert Kelly. All right, here's the deal. The Patriots are going to win. Why? Because they're the fucking Pats. I'm from Boston. I have no choice. Okay? Uh, other places. If you're from Atlanta, you can pick the, Pat, pick the Pats. Nobody gives a shit. Okay, if, when you're from New York, Boston, or Philly, or Chicago, you have to pick your team, no matter what. So Pats are going to win. How are they going to win? Why are they going to win? Because they're the fucking Patriots. They always win, unless it's the Giants and that cockeyed Manning kid throws up a Hail Mary or whatever the voodoo fucking doll he had made to uh, beat Tom Brady twice. That doesn't even make sense, by the way. But Pats win because of the Pats. And the score, I'm telling you right now. You ready for the score? Are you ready for the score? 14 to nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> – watch that be the score. You guys would shit your pants. I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be a blowout. I think the Pats are going to fucking run the, run the board. They're going to fucking run it out real quick right at the beginning. They're going to tire out that stupid defense. It's going to be 30-something to fucking in the teens. They're going to get in the teens. That's it. They're going to panic in the big show. They're going to get all whipped up. Brady cut his hair. And he gave a speech today, and he screamed. He's on fire. He wants that ring. You understand that? He wants that ring. So it's going to happen. Pats all the way. So 30-something to end the teens. <laughs> the teens. Yeah. They're going to... They're going to tire out that defense. They're going to get all whipped up. They're going to get... They're going to choke in the big show. <laughs> <laughs> On Big Sunday? You understand? When you're from Chicago or Philly or New York, you have to pick. And Boston. Now, people from Atlanta can pick whoever they want. No one will care. <laughs> How is that true? Do you think if you live in Atlanta and you're like you no. say, let's go, Pats, your your neighbors are gonna like you? <laughs> Our neighbors are dick loves the Pats. <laughs> Seriously, Bobby Kelly, who do you love more? Uh, it's, so impossible. No it's, no it's impossible. They can you can only tie him. <laughs> That's it. He's the guy. Yes, Chris. <laughs> Stop agreeing with me. This isn't, seriously, this isn't Boston. You have every right to your own pick. How can I not love Bob Ke- Robert Kelly? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I love him. Why did you feel uncomfortable to call him Bob Kelly for one second? You started with Bob, and then you were like, oh, I mean, Mr. Robert Kelly. I'm so sorry. I felt comfortable there Bobby. for a moment. Bobby. Uh, where are we on the overall score right now? Are you guys keeping it? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, keep it. Pat's 21, mm-hmm. and Falcons is, let's see, 16. Yeah. Mm. It's not you know another Falcons. reason why I'm thinking the Falcons could win this, though? Why is that? Mm-hmm. Falcon Crest. Remember that show? Oh, yeah, Falcon I remember that. Crest? Yeah. 
There was never a show called Patriot, Chris. <laughs> Good point. Was that not Bruce Boxleitner? I believe he was on there. You're going too deep, Chris. <laughs> All right? <laughs> This show is about scratching the surface. Yeah. I don't have time to go through his IMDb page. <laughs> Just say it, Falcon Crest, man. I didn't know that Bruce Box... What is his name? Box Leitner. Yeah, I didn't know that he was in it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. I never saw Falcon Crest. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think that's the last name. It's yes, okay. I swear to God, it is. He was also on Babylon 5, season 2. All right, you're going way too far away <laughs> from what we're trying to do. What we're talking we're about We're talking about anywhere. the big game, the show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The big game. Who's next, uh, Gail? Next up, we've got Dave Temple. Hey, this is Dave Temple. My Super Bowl prediction would be the Atlanta Falcons over Patriots, all right? Uh, 34-17. Reason being, it's the year of the upset, all right? We got uh, Cubs won. Yo, on point, Trump by a landslide. You can't go wrong. 34-17. Bet on it. Dave Temple, uh, another one of the Philly guys, the great Philly comedians. And Temple University is in Philadelphia, and he's Dave Temple. And they're called the, the Temple what? Temple, uh, I don't know. Owls. Owls. Yeah. So if you ever said, who do you want to win? And you go, ow. See? I knew they were going to win. <laughs> like, I was just like, pinch? Yeah. Temple pinch. Little pinchers. <laughs> the little crabs? crabs? The choo-choo-choo, like little crabs? By the way, that Dave Temple's got a great voice, doesn't he? He's oh, got he a radio does. voice. Hell yeah. He absolutely yeah. does. And I like his, his uh, upset logic. Well, his upset logic, it's its based on what he sees as a perfect storm coming together. The problem is, that was the 2016 updates, and we're in 2017. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I worry. I worry about the upset logic. So you don't you think it, the upsets stop at a calendar date? Yeah. They don't go season by season? Exactly. Because this season started yeah. in 2016. These, uh, this, Chris, so you know, yes. will be the 2016 champion uh-huh. even though it takes place in 2017 Thank you. understood but it's but the 2016 world series was won in 2016 yeah but that, when you when you look back when history looks back upon this time would you not call this the 2016 it is championship it is i understand that i'm just saying you don't understand it that's oh, why you're that's still I'm... making the mistake of acting like it's this year when this is actually right now we're in last year <laughs> holy shit dave temple's right <laughs> you really need to curse that much i, oh. I apologize this is awful. You say you apologize, and then potty mouth comes back, and this time, actual potty. <laughs> it's too late to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you know who can get us all out of this? Who? Uh, he does the show called Black and White on True TV. He does Race Wars on his own podcast, Sherrod Small. Gerard Small, handsome comedian. Uh, Super Bowl this year. I'm going to have to say I want Atlanta to win, but, you know, Tom Brady's going to win. Lose or win, Tom Brady's winning. Look at his head of hair and that wife uh, and those beautiful, fuckable kids. (laughs) But I'm pulling for Atlanta, yeah. But Tom Brady always wins. Who was yelling in the background, Chris? I wasn't sure. You you didn't do it? Oh, Vito did. Why didn't you ask him? I forgot to. You forgot to ask oh who was yelling? God. I forgot I'm to I'm sure ask. that was another star. We could have used it. I feel like an idiot. The reason why I'm saying it is it sounded like it was Opie to me, but I, I don't know that for a fact. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, get It's too the late. Okay. The show is going to be over. This is a special. It's happening now. This is the moment. You know what I also feel bad about? What's that? Somebody has Sherrod, but not Opie. If Opie was sitting there. In my business, the business of radio, that is like taking a leather glove <laughs> And smacking someone across the scrotum with it. <laughs> I didn't know that's how you one starts a duel. In radio, yeah. Oh, that's a radio duel. <laughs> yeah, that's a radio duel. That's called just as a leather uh, glove across the scrotum. So who did he pick? The Patriots. He well, took the Patriots, even though he didn't want to. Yeah, a lot of people. That's a, that's a common theme. People don't want the Patriots to win. Yes, but they can't picture the Patriots losing. It exactly. takes us back to Darth Vader. I thought he was going to win everything, Sucks. everything in the galaxy. <laughs> But his own son upset him. A jerk. Who's the jerk? Luke. He can't have a problem with anybody trying to win. I mean, you're you're not calling Atlanta jerks for trying to win. Yeah, but he could have joined them. He could have joined the dark side. And they could have taken out the emperor themselves. I didn't see it. Oh shit! Is it good? It's it's pretty. So great. I feel like good. it's been ruined for me. Mm-mm, it's no. really good. No, there's a lot of other great stuff you'll know about. It's the funniest people. Uh, Chris is trying to drag it into Star Wars talk, oh. but this is the funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions 
in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. That's too long of a title. <laughs> That's way too long of a title. Right now, the only person that can pull us out of this is the very funny Pete Lee. I'm going to pick Atlanta because they've never won the big game. Like, that town has had more Olympics than Lombardi trophies. I'm going final score, Atlanta 34, Patriots 14. Whoa. Whoa. I love that he found that little angle of bringing up the 19, I'm going to say 88 Olympics. Yeah, I think it's 88 Olympics. <laughs> no, 96 Olympics, right? I thought it was 92. No, 92 was in Barcelona. That was the dream team. I'm gonna look it How do you right forget now. the dream team if you just act he like you're the biggest sports it. fan of all time? <laughs> the greatest team that's ever been put together. 1996. Yeah, thank Good you. Good job. Yeah. Well, I said 88 first, so. Yeah, but you You know why, right? It. I was thinking crazy 88s. For Which, sure. by the way, there wasn't even 88 of them. They just think it's a cool name. Yeah, but I think that uh, you, it's like, who wants to be a millionaire rules? Like you, you said, like. Okay, this is what I think it is, but right. then you gave your final answer. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This is millionaire rules. And by the way, we live in a town now where billionaires rule. Hats off to you, T. Rump. <laughs> where do you think he's going to watch the game? You think he's going to go I to think, Houston? I think he has to go to Houston. Really? Be crazy if he comes walking out with Lady Gaga. <laughs> he has Holding to hands together. They mend it. They, like, fist pump into the air together. And wait, what if they, you just see him raise his hands, and then he puts them together, and he goes, you can dance if you want to, you, you can leave, leave your friends behind, because if, if friends don't, don't dance, and if they don't dance, and they're no friends of mine, you can, you can dance, you, you can, can dance. dance, everybody look at my pants. <laughs> Oh, this uh, this is a stupid special. It's fun. No, it's not. Is it fun or <laughs> is it stupid? Fun. It's fun. I, I think only children would like this show. And informative. <laughs> You know, finally, we got somebody who knows sports, and this is a friend of mine and a man who understands the sporting world, Mr. Don Jameson. I hate to say this, but I think uh, the Patriots are going to win. I want Atlanta to win, but I think the Patriots are going to win because they'll probably cheat, and then we'll have to watch Rob Gronkowski with a shirt off dancing on a table in some bar in Boston, which doesn't infuriate anybody. 27-24. Patriots. Ugh, go Mets. <laughs> and now that was the other big score, right? That's the other Madden score, yeah. And these oh, guys really? did not know. We've had two people pick the Madden score without knowing at the time exactly. what the Madden score was going to be. This is creepy, dude. Fascinating, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting. Fascinating. I'm freaking out. I'm going out of my mind right now. I might end up hanging myself with a belt <laughs> the night before the game with just like a little note on me going, I got too excited for the game. <laughs> Um, now, here's a gentleman. I don't know which way he's going to go uh, from upstate New York, but made his bones in Boston and now is North America's favorite comedian. This is Mr. Barry Crimmins. I think Atlanta is up and coming. It may be time for the changing of the guards, but I'm playing Boston this week. So I'm picking the Patriot and miserable Belichick. I think the score is going to be. 31 to 27. Pats. It's going to be a good game. Barry Crimmins. He did, the Pats. He picked the Pats, mm. despite Belichick. I wonder why people call him the Pats and never the Ratesiots. <laughs> we should start that. I don't want to, Chris. I just why wondered. Why does that mean now i got to suddenly be in charge of this thing? I'm the guy who wondered it. Listen, I'm always down with the Patriots. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The man who said, hey, why don't we go to the moon? He didn't necessarily get into the spaceship and go there. <laughs> These are two different jobs. So if you love the idea so much, why don't you go to the moon? <laughs> then he go like, you know what? Forget it. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could call him that. But that's on you, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't you're be the that one guy. to start it. I don't want to be that guy. Um. Well, you know what? Let's get a little feminine energy in this. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. It's the very funny Lisa Traeger. Hey, I'm Lisa Traeger, and I want the Falcons to win the Super Bowl because I have family that lives there, so I'd like to support them. And I hate the Patriots because they win too much. Tom Brady's a douche. They all look like they vote for Trump. They cheat. 
and his diet is insane. Um, and I don't think they're good people, so I don't want them to win. And well, I was about to say Boston has a lot, but they did have that terrorist attack, so I'll lay off on Boston. Um, but I'm mostly watching the Super Bowl for Lady Gaga. I'll be full on honest. I can't wait for Lady Gaga. She's going to nail it. She kills it at every live performance. And I can't wait to see what she does. This new album, Joanne, is incredible. And I'm hoping that after she performs, she'll release all her dates for her tour this year because I'm, like, dying to see her. Um, So that's what I'm most excited about. And I think the score is going to be close, just a field goal, like 27-24. Whoa. Whoa. Another 27-24 person. Very interesting. And they all said the Pats. Yes. Or Richards. Yeah. The Richards. But she was, uh, that was the Falcons pick, but it would be... Uh, I would she also picked the Falcons. she picked the Falcons, okay. but she uh, she said uh, I would also even put this as a score for Lady Gaga. Can we give her one credit? I have no this? problem with that at all. Gaga. Apparently, they're going to announce the tour plans. Um, <laughs> like that's her hopes. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I what? Immediately be, on stage? She's I, th- gonna be like, <laughs> I think she's going to say, "Go to my Instagram account." I like that she lays off Boston. Though. That was kind. <laughs> Yes, still brought the they did have their own, Yeah, they did have their own tragedy. That's why she's not attacking them. That's that's very. Sweet. She brought up uh, Lady Gaga, mm-hmm. Trump, and the Boston terrorist <laughs> attack. None of those things seem like they're Super Bowl friendly. No, it's not, and it was uh, in a very short period of time too. Now, uh, here is a gentleman, is a longtime uh, pal of mine, and a. I'll say a crush for a very young Gail Bennington <laughs> was in love with Jimmy Schubert. Who I want to win the Super Bowl would be the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, you know, who I think is going to win is probably going to be New England Patriots, although they don't have their all their weapons. But, I mean, do they ever get sick and tired of freaking winning? Bill Belichick's evil. He should be working for the government. And can he, and can he dress like a grown man or does he got to dress like he's wearing his big brother's hand-me-downs? Holy smokes. This guy's a grown man. What's he going to wear the Hall of Fame induction ceremony? A white beater and a pair of flip-flops? Anyway, I'm kind of pulling for the Falcons, but I think the uh, New England Patriots are going to win, and the final score is going to be like 32-28. to 28. I'm going to say 32 to 28. 32? That's an odd. I don't know if I've ever seen a game that was 32. <laughs> what is that? Four touchdowns plus four extra, uh, um, two points. Uh, and safety. Two safeties. No, if they got eight points each time, okay. four times. Wow, now I'm on field calls. Now, here. where are you going? You're going... Uh, uh, four touchdowns. And two safeties. <laughs> two safeties. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, messed up sacks. <laughs> it's like, how is this again? In the Super Bowl? Stop screaming. I think anyone could see now, though, why, why oh, I had that yeah. crush. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not the love. I mean, you could see how a young girl... What's he got to do? Uh, have a wife beater and a pair of flip flops? <laughs> you know, you know. I don't know what he's supposed to do with it. <laughs> so funny. Uh, are we down to our last person? We yes, are. This is our final comedian. It's well. It's your headliner tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you're going to enjoy him. Or else this is the check spot. I don't know which. Is, but no, uh, you know, he's one of the greatest uh, writers out there. This is Gary Goldman. I think that um, the final score is going to be Falcons 37, Patriots 21. And um, I think that because I'm doing a, a reverse jinx, because I, I the whole universe won't let me be happy. But if I somehow am, the universe thinks I'm happy that the prediction comes true, then I'll be happy because the Patriots won. So that... The universe is not going to let me be happy because they think I want the Falcons to win. But I really secretly don't. But I don't think the universe is is in tune with me enough to pick up on that. So I'm predicting a Falcons victory, even though what will make me happy is the Patriots winning. Now, I I may have undone that by by stating this, but I'm I'm pretty sure the universe is is, um, only listening to the the first part of this and will, will think that I really want the Falcons to win, and then they'll they'll lose. So that's my that's my prediction. Anxiety and superstition is a terrible thing to live with. That, but we have to give that to the Falcons. <laughs> Absolutely, that yeah. is an official pick for the Falcons. So here it is. We talk with forty five comedians, the funniest comedians on the planet. Matter of fact, if anybody 
isn't on this list. It's only because we don't think they're funny. <laughs> All really? right. So Kevin Hart. Oh, my God. Louis C.K. Nope. David Tell. Nah. We don't find you funny. No. That's why we didn't put you on this. Sorry. These are the funniest. Yeah. We were. We had Bill Cosby too blind to find the phone. Mm-hmm. How could he have raped anyone? <laughs> All right. What is the final, the final tally? All right. What I have here is yes. Patriots 25 Falcons 20. 25 to 20. Uh, that's a five point spread if you're betting at home. That's that's nice. Well, we're going to have to wrap this up. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. With us, as always, is our faithful manservant, <laughs> Chris Stanley. Hey, guys. And the, <laughs> this is. <laughs> The funniest people on the planet make the funniest predictions in the universe for football's biggest game of the year. And now here is our closing theme. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Because if you don't dance and if they don't dance, and are no friends of mine. Dance. You can dance. Everybody look, look at, at your pants. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you again in 2018. <laughs> All right, that's it for today's program. That was really fun, though, right? That was a blast, and great job, Chris. You you booked 45 of the funniest comedians. And you had some great comedians on the show today, too. Mr. John Early, Miss Kate Berlant. I booked 47 people today. (laughs) Can I tell you this? huge. (laughs) Chris Stanley, runner up to the MVP. Yeah! Runner up. That's really good. That's me, Chris. Uh, I had the joke. Yeah, not at all. Please, Chris, yeah, come understood. on. Understood. Can I say something? Yes. A monkey could book people. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a genius to come up with it. <laughs> Thanks to the 45 comedians, too. Um, 25 of them picked the Patriots and 20 picked the Falcons. And I I imagine that's kind of where the betting line would be right yeah. now, right? Yeah, that's what it looks that like. close. Um. Uh, by the way, out of all 45, only one predicted a race war. Hmm. Three or no, nine people hate the Patriots, but pick them anyway. Yeah. Which is kind of a fun one. Um, seven said they were picking the Patriots, but rooting for the Falcons. So that's 16 uh, altogether. Two of the 45 said that Brady is a hunk. Okay. So uh, that's and reason. zero thought that Belichick was a hunk. <laughs> Wow. Seven of the comedians name checked Bill Belichick. In other words, brought him up as a reason. Um, and two brought up the fact that Falcons can fly. <laughs> Good point. That's a next gen stat. That's four kind of... out of the forty five brought up President Trump, okay. which is weird. Related. Um and five couldn't tell the difference between a football and a can of soup. And <laughs> only one of them had an answer that had to be censored on the eye bang. Really? Not even sure what the reason was. I can't imagine. Yeah, I couldn't either. I even asked. They said, uh, if I'm not rating it on the eye bang, why would I rate it back to you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what the term was. Okay. Uh, use the term fuckable children. Oh, okay. Oh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, now, now I Now I know. Funny that that didn't stand out to us, though. No. <laughs> GPS uh, tomorrow on Deep Tracks. GPS Seattle, Saturday. Also, come see me and a bunch of great comedians tonight at, at, in the stand, if you'd like to. It's going to be a really fun night. It's going to be a fantastic show. I can't seem to talk either one of these, though, when they're coming down. What? But I'd love to see you there one night. That's it for us. Gail, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, there's going to be a new Gail Meets Girls that is going to be up on Monday, so stay tuned. I'll wait till I get the alert, because mm-hmm. I'm signed up. Oh, I'm signed you up on subscribe. iTunes. Yep, I subscribe. So that's it for us. Thanks so much. What a fun day today. And see you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening!